take it too far to say that we cannot pretend now wasn't ever enough to have just everything you want in your shadow i found a place to hide me from my own thoughts and if i ever got lost to find the Hello everybody and welcome in for the AEL High School League and I'm back on desk with uh, who should be pretty familiar to you at this point, whoops you, how you going man? Good, good Gax, good to have you back, I'm excited for this week too, we got some great Rocket League action and you know I, I've been here for like you said a few weeks already and it's just been such good Rocket League action, I'm excited mm. to get this week kicked off as well. Yeah, me too. Uh, we've got some amazing teams coming in. We've already seen the potential of these guys. I think uh, our first week casting together, whoops, we had some absolutely incredible players. But uh, you know what? I don't know. If you, do you want to do the uh, the reads here, or we, we've got to kick this off by thanking some people? Is what I'm saying. I mean, yeah, I can, I can definitely start off. You know, the, the the sponsors. I love the sponsors. We love talking about them because, of course, without them, none of this would be possible. And of course, we have to start off with Predator. Uh, essentially just I can't find where my ad read there it is okay that Predator Gaming the gaming PC partner who provides the high-end gaming focused PC solutions in both laptop and desktop formats and of course they're always powered by Intel a great great partner to be powered by Intel and you gotta pair that with some sort of monitor Gex and with that we have AOC monitors the gaming monitor partner who provides the best in-class monitor solutions for gaming and all of your other needs as well yeah, it, we've still got more there though because you gotta you gotta have the food. You gotta, you, gotta you, have you, it. gaming. You gotta have the food. And what better than Indomie, the noodle partner here for us today, made with high quality flour and selected ingredients and spices. A plate of Indomie Mi Goreng will certainly brighten up your day. Try any one of the flavors available today from your local grocer or at Indomie.com.au. And of course, finishing up the lot is. Something very close to our hearts, Game on Cancer, the charity of choice for the AEL who fund much needed cancer research projects with the AEL donating a portion of all student participation fees to this life saving cause. If you'd like to be, uh, if you'd like to donate as well, please head to the AEL's Tiltify campaign page. So, uh, definitely a great thing to get involved with there. Whoops. Uh, I think both uh, both of us actually have a friend whose uh, mum's been suffering with cancer lately. So, uh, and uh, yeah, yeah. To that as well. So, shout out to Rainwater uh, if she's out there somewhere. But yeah, uh, no, it's great. Let's get into the games though, because we've got to get this started. And first up is going to be the MRC Saints versus Ripley Raptors. I'm keen for this one. Ripley Raptors have been absolutely nuts, and I think this is going to be a bit of a challenge for them as well. I mean, I think it's going to be a good start off here for the Ripley Raptors, to be honest with you. It's, it's going to be a good uh, warm-up game, I should say. Mm. Really, really good, but at the same time, I really feel like they have a couple of uh, mistakes that they kind of let out into their offense and out into the mm. defense as well. I really feel like the Raptors, I'm, I'm, I'm favoring them, I should say, Gex, in this matchup because I feel like they can capitalize on those mistakes that these Saints are going to provide to them. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think that this is going to be, like you said, a, a great warm-up, but uh, it might not be the greatest test that the Raptors have faced so far. What I'm yeah. ha hoping for, this group has been fairly close, though. Uh, we have seen, I think the first week you and I cast together, we saw one big blowout game. Series scores have not been all that close, but game scores, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think every big promise in the league so far so i'm looking for that promise to really kind of show its head and uh and for the teams to live up to their reputations today and uh you know what? i can see that coming out of the mrc saints as well well i just i'm leaning a little bit more towards the raptors just because of last Absolutely. week i know you i know you weren't here for it but you still look at the standings and things like that but the raptors took linwood to game number five not only took them to game number five but also beat them in that best of five matchup so Linwood's one of those top performing teams week in, week out. And for the Raptors to do that, to take them all the way to game five and win, just shows me that they're starting to heat up. They're starting to, you know, move towards the right direction that they really need to in the season. Yeah. 
you know, I feel like Ripley Raptors have been going pretty even. There are some teams who still give them a big challenge here as well uh, that they have struggled to topple. Uh, so Ripley Raptors are a good kind of litmus test for this group. So if you can get past them, you might have a shot at the bigger dogs as well. Yeah, I agree with you on that one as well. You know, like you said, they they're in the step of the right direction. You know, they're sitting mm. at currently, I believe, in the in the uh, Division One standings. I think they're about that fourth place spot, if not like around that third fourth place spot. So, like I said, the step in the right direction. MRC Saints, I believe, sitting around that fifth place spot. So, you know, towards mm. the bottom of the six team, you know, uh, leaderboard here. But at the same time, Gex, I mean, it's still anybody's ball game. It's still a couple of weeks left in the season. All these teams, in my personal opinion, are such good matchups. They're so fair. Mm. Um, as far as everything goes, everybody could potentially be anybody at that point in time. Good indeed. And of course, we are still here in our uh, first phase of matches. This is all going to feed into competition later on as well. So keep your eye on this. It is important for these teams to make it through make their way on through the competition because this is going on for some time and uh, this is only the beginning of our competition here the AEL University uh, high school <laughs> <laughs> it's all right I mean in high school level these guys play like uh, you know university level players at most times and you know like we talked about beforehand sometimes we can potentially see these guys you know go to their favorite uni and you know perform mm. well link up together go to the same team and you know build that uh, trust to take it to the next level where is the uh, the next level is gonna be of course RLCS for OC and stuff yeah but um, Couple of these matches on, on your guys' screen right here, Gex. Um, first up, of course, we have the MRC versus you know that Ripley Raptors. Um, you know, Queensland did pretty decent last week. I think they only dropped one game in total last week. I think that was wow. the uh, the Raptors team um, versus Kendron. But at the same time, I'm circling that Queensland, like that Kendron team versus Linwood. I think that one is really going to be like the match of the day for me. Yeah, I, th I would agree. Uh, Linwood always plays interestingly. Even when they're against a team that doesn't quite stack up to them, they tend to try and make it interesting. Uh, but yeah, I, I would agree. That's probably the standout for me as well. But you know what? We've got our guys ready. So let's get them over into this next match up. Ripley Raptors, they're definitely going to be my pick as well. Whoops. Uh, I could even see this if there isn't the pickup. If they don't reach their potential, I could see Ripley Raptors taking this one in a sweep. I, I can kind of see that as well. I mean, the sweep, uh, I'm not too sure. I can probably give a little bit more credit to the Saints than that, but... At the same time, it just depends on what sort of Ripley Raptors team we're going to have. So as we hop into game number one, I guess we're going to find out which one we're going to see as we have the Saints taking on the Ripley Raptors. Great shot across the bow there. Imvor is coming up looking for that pinch. Doesn't quite go as planned and runs out of boost in the process. Stays committed upfield might be a bit dangerous here for them. And this is kind of the weakness that you see that MRC Saints are going to have to look for to capitalize on. They are pushing straight away into the gaps left by Ripley Raptors. And I want to say the standout performer last week for me was definitely Inbor. He has been oh, everywhere. Yeah. The workhorse of this team for the Raptors. A couple of missed shots early on for the Raptors, though. Not really going to be able to capitalize on this mm. offensive opportunity that, that they had starting out this matchup in crypto oh, with a big dunk. going to take that one right back towards the orange half of the field, but no one there for the follow-up. Invor does just put in the work, though. I mean, he's been around for a while, and a pass upfield to V Hill. That is what you want to see as well. V Hill Devils getting straight onto it for the passing play in 126k an hour. It's going to be a booming shot. Yeah, V-Hill's double stepped up last week as well for the Raptors, but at the same time, you know, it was just the Inbor show. He was using the breakouts, but so it's kind of interesting to see him using the Fennec right now because even Twitch chat was saying breakout diff, breakout tip. So, yeah. I mean, so it's kind of weird to see him stray away from that. So there has to be some sort of, uh, you know, reasoning from last week to this week as to what he feels like. I don't feel like there's a lot of players left out there who main breakout either. It used to be a standard early days of Rocket League. I think it was definitely a standard, but kind of have shied away from that. So it's nice to see somebody bring that back into the uh, into the norm almost here. Um, but like you said, not in match right now. Where maybe we see that uh, car swap out if they take a loss here. We often do see um, the teams kind of reset their mental by uh, by jumping out between games, switching out that car and coming back in with something fresh just to just to keep the minds uh, happy. 
Yeah, I mean, who knows what the, the reason may be for... Maybe he's the one I'd be too, too activated into the into the mm -hmm. breakout, but whatever reason it may be, um, I do want to iterate. You know, I think this is a rematch of week one. You were talking about that earlier as well. Mm -hmm. I think I think the Saints actually did take a game away from the Raptors in week number one as well. That's why yeah. I kind of don't yeah, feel like did. it's going to be a sweep, but at the same oh, time... Oh my goodness! Whoa, what a pitch play here from homeboy Jesus. Homeboy Jesus for real, for real, is just hammering this one home. Great pass across from Invor, and it's just kind of put a little bit of extra pep on that 148k an hour is uh, probably one of the faster goals you'll see here today, but it did have to come off a defender to uh, to make that speed possible. Yeah, that was insane right there. That, that play just drawn up, can't replicate it again. Like you said, the double commit right there for... Uh, for the Saints just did not work out in their favor. And those are the mistakes I was talking about as well. You know, the Raptors do such a good job of being patient, patient, um, but that is their kryptonite as well. They need to be a little bit more aggressive when it comes to the stronger teams like the Toners. It's funny coming into the uh, the high school leagues and seeing the, the, the massive variation between players as well. It's always nice to see everybody step up and have a go. And if, if you haven't yet and your your school is open to it, definitely get involved because it's a lot of fun and you, you get experience against some crazy players because that's my point. At 16, you're still in high school. Some of the best players in the world are 16 years old. It's crazy the variation you will see out of high school leagues. Yeah, in high school, like I said before, you, you really kind of have like a slim pool of players who you can kind of mess around with. You, know, you have to kind of be reserved to the players who are, you know, from your school. This one could find its way in. Homeboy Jesus didn't have the follow, unfortunate. Another missed opportunity to Actually, for the Raptors. How old is Zen? He's going to still be sc high school age, right? Yeah, yeah. He just turned 16, he is, I believe. That's he why is he's literally the Carl best Sims. player in the world right now. I, I don't Arguably, think there's yeah. many people arguing against it, but... I mean, there is still argument there, but yeah, I don't think there's a lot of people arguing it right this second. Crypto, you know, he might not be world's best right now, but he's stepping up to the plate to make the first point for MRC Saints. And that just comes off of a mistake right there from Invor, who uh, left the match. <laughs> I think he might be he's switching going to get the vehicles mid-match. He's, he's, he's back, he's back. Uh, I've never actually seen that happen before mid-match, <laughs> where a player just kind of leaves. <laughs> And uh, just like I uh, hope I'm good to DC, he says. It, if he's back with the uh, with the breakout, we know what's up. <laughs> yeah, I, I, there might be a forfeit in favor of the Saints there in that personal, in my personal opinion, it could be. But we'll see what happens as the referee kind of you know gets things going. We're gonna hop back into this matchup here in game number one, and we do see a car change from Invor. He switches <laughs> to the breakout. There it is, Invor claiming DC, switching to breakout. Oh my we goodness! See it. So he and scores he's the using goal. it straight away. Yeah, it's just, it's the confidence boost. No, it's the something boost. I tell you that much. Mind games, whatever it is, that is. A big no-no in my personal opinion. You'll just leave the match to kind of uh, break out, uh, switch vehicles to a breakout, like I said. But it is what it is. It works in his favor. He does get himself a goal. And right now, the Raptors are up 3-1. to one. I called him out in the chat, and he just put, this is Rocket League. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's some bander going on here. Okay, to be fair, he was out of that game. And if there had no, been no pause from the referee, we... He would have been in before the kickoff started. He was out and back in so fast. Yeah. I mean, we, I think, have a pause right now from the referee. I believe uh, he oh. literally is it's against yeah, the rules. Yeah, he did he break the rules. leave the match and basically come back to, with a different vehicle. So the Saints, I think, are going to take game number one. Um, even though they were losing one to three with only about a minute left. At that point in time, Gex, I mean, it was one to two. I really feel like you kind of just tough it out at that point in time. And mm. after the game is over, you <laughs> switch course. vehicles. Not yeah. just, you know, midway point through this game. You, you get scored While on, you play the vehicle. Yeah. You get one one goal against you, and you're like, nope. This is it. This is it. It's all downhill from here unless I get breakout right now. All right. Let, look, let's be honest. MRC Saints taking this is good for them. Ripley Raptors yep. still have a very, very positive chance and probably still my preference to win this game. I mean, yeah, overall, I think it, it, it's true. Um, like you said beforehand, the Raptors, like they, they pull off some shenanigans week in, week out all the time. Yeah. I have no idea why they like to sit here and test the rules and bend the rules, uh, whatever it may be. But, you know, <laughs> like I said, they're happy. on the up and up. Yeah, they're, they're on the up and up. Don't do it again, it. wink, wink. That's... <laughs> Crypto's like, yeah, 
Yeah, no. Oh, definitely. Mm-mm. Do not uh, forfeit another one to us. Mm, that oh, would be terrible. Yeah, you might as well just go up to match point at that point in time. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I can't with these guys. These guys are just something else. We can, we got. I mean, they've been warned before in the past. That's what ultimately what it comes down to. Mm. You know, that's why I, I agree with the stoppage here, Gex. You know, the referee, I think, in my personal opinion, did the right thing. In this in this situation, you can't just leave yeah. the match and switch cards. I mean, it is, it is actually in the rule book. So this is just fair. This is uh, this is what the rules are. You got to play by the rules. Invo's taken the loss. He's not arguing it. He's happy. He forgot. It's fine. It happens. We're moving on. They've... Given away the game in game one, they're gonna look to take it back in game two. Yeah, I mean, it was a good start though for the uh, for the Raptors. I really feel like they thrive on that first goal. Always in every single match, they live and die by it in my personal opinion. So, mm. you know, they, they were they were doing such a good job um, on the offensive end. They had a lot of missed opportunities, but at the same time, I really feel like they were more in control of the game in that game number one. Oh. Whereas game number two, they're gonna start off without that first goal in their favor. Ghosty taking goal number one here for MRC Saints. It was Crypto last time. And you know what? They only needed the one goal to win last time. Maybe that's the case this time for totally different reasons. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Uh, KBS posted on that. So far, 1-0 and in favor of the Saints. And they've only scored one goal. So surprisingly, being outscored and still up in the series is kind of unreal. <laughs> Double commit there, but should be safe for now. Homeboy Jesus does make that in question, though. Invo picking up control. Doesn't have another touch there as the pinch takes it nowhere. He's been going for a few of those. I feel like Invo must have been practicing his uh, cuxes. Yeah, cucks here pinches, man. If you get that mechanic down, it, it results in such uh, a good opportunity for a clear. Not only that, sometimes it results in the goal. A lot of people want that goal just for the highlight film purposes. But in my personal opinion, if you can get that down just to get yourself a clear and relieve some pressure, yeah. maybe regain some boost, it's so crucial. Oh. As you see a goal here from uh, Homeboy Jesus going to make this one one to one. Kaksa pinches are so relevant at this level because of the fact that Skull scored this goal right here. Booming touches at this level can be absolutely deadly, whether it's a pass or a shot on target like that was. All the way upfield, nobody there to collect and it just hand over. You're going to get a positive result out of that. Yeah, nine times out of ten it goes in your favor but just because like you said, the mechanics just aren't there yet. Some players, they, they are, but you know, I really feel like for some players out here on the pitch. Mechanics, that's, that's decision making to me. That's 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 on game sense. You gotta have big hours to correct that error. And it looks like errors might still need to be corrected here for MRC Saints as well. Everybody going for the save. Only one bit of contact made and it is not enough as V-Hill Devils fights it through the goal line. You know, I was going to say that that came off the back of just missed top, or uh, missed clears mm. there. Crypto had a chance at it. You also had Super Nye, who I believe had a chance at that one as well. So regaining the lead now is Rifty Raptors blue. But knocking on the door are the Saints. Here comes oh. Super Nye. He fires that one like a cannon into the back of the net. Great to see Super Nye stepping up to the bat now as well. In this series, every member of the MRC Saints has scored now. So, you know, MRC Saints, they are switched on. They are all activated and coming in. Little guns blazing. Crypto, this game though, only has earned 16 points. Needs to get more into this match. It's a good pass right there from Crypto though. And this is a huge problem. Nobody there to respond from the Raptors. Good demolition though. Yeah. They're going to keep... Oh, I was going to say, keep that pressure on, but Invor was there. That one's a nice Whoa. floater. Nice pass right on top of Homeboy. Jesus can't capitalize on it. Another missed opportunity for the Raptors. A shot downfield from Super Noi is going to get the lead back for MRC Saints as well. Just jumped on that. Pure speed coming in, cutting off V-Hill Devils. Ghosty was up for that as well. Kind of lucky he didn't take that. In fact, it looked like he might have left it intentionally. Might have been the call off there to, to the call from uh, Super Noi that he had the shot lined up. So great to see the team calming and working well together. Yeah, I agree with you on that one. That was just a good play from the Saints. And, you know, who knows? It could have been uh, activated the Saints' ultimate powers. Crypto Whoa. shot. Going to be too far to the right-hand side. Invor needs to get desperately get it clear here. Good. Relieve some of this pressure. Another shot coming through. Going to be denied, though. V-Hill Devils going to take this one to the opposite end. And there goes a breakaway for them. A nice little pass towards the infield. But Ghosty covers it up. 
Boy Jesus now with the reset. Oh, can't quite reach it for the second. And everybody committed underneath that as well. Really risky there from Ripley Raptors. They gotta be careful with these overcommits. They've been punished once before, but it doesn't matter if they take shots like this. Sort of just under the crossbar. And it's gonna be Ripley Raptors evening up game number two and possibly the series if they can get another here. Yeah, I'm not too sure if Crypto had enough boost in the tank to kind of combat that shot right there from Homeboy Jesus. But regardless, it was such a like a, a lofty shot, I guess you could kind of say. Homeboy Jesus timed it perfectly where it was going to be pretty much the apex of that one was just right over top. And then it came right down on top of the crossbar. It's a beautiful time shot right there from Homeboy Jesus. All right, you said Zen was arguably the best player arguably. in the world right now. Where, where's the other <laughs> argument for you? What's, what's, uh, your, what's your pick? I mean, this is just my personal Vitera, opinion. Maybe? You want to get into you want to get into politics on this? Uh, I'm yeah, sure yeah, you yeah. could do that. 100. Yeah, I mean, the tears. You're is a good in Australia. Candidate. It doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> we don't come just, into that conversation. <laughs> no, no. I was just gonna say, like, it's it's an argument that uh, uh, quote unquote hasn't really been tested in the NA side of the field. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, you, yeah. You, you just, oh, it's uh, hard to test a, t a region that's not showing up at land. You know. Yeah, 100%. 100% agree with you on that one. <laughs> no, just but ribbing, just ribbing. Right. I'm, I'm just saying, though, like, if you, if you think about it, I mean, Zen is such a... He's a good player. He's mechanical. Mm -hmm. He has to be accounted for at any, any given time, but he does have two other teammates as well, and yeah, I absolutely. really feel like that is a, the main contributor to why Vitality has been, you know, stepping up and uh, performing very, very well is, is because of the fact that, you know, they all been playing together so mm -hmm. well. If you look at that and team on paper, they don't match up. <laughs> no, and, and I mean, some some big topic for discussion recently I've noticed across most regions has been the importance of third man coming in. So often third man has been overlooked to this point in competition, but I would argue here, V-Hill Devils was probably my bet for third man on Ripley Raptors. Look at him stepping up. That's two goals. He's even with homeboy Jesus right now. And Invor is sitting there, who I would have said was first man on this roster, uh, at, with zero goals. I mean, but it's just, it's, it's situational. I think me and Max talked about this last oh, week. Oh, absolutely. You kind of pass the rock to the hot hand. Who is going to be the person mm, that's going to step yep. up this week? You, sometimes, you know, the players just, they, they, they start to realize who that number one player is. Yeah. So but I mean, it, ma it makes it person. even more important to have a solid third, right? Because yeah. if you're going to be changing that hand to hand, you need everybody active. And that's what we're seeing from both of these teams on field right now. Everybody yeah. has been involved. Invor was scoring game one. Crypto was scoring game one. And now here in game two, everybody else is on the board. Yeah, I agree with you. I think uh, I think you hit the nail right in the head. Everybody on the team stepping up to try to push past, you know, the MRC Saints, and mm. it doesn't always have to be that star player, quote unquote, which is in boards. Like a good cross shot right there from Homeboy Jesus, just a little bit too far to the left hand side. But 14 seconds oh, remaining Crypto. here. Good shot from Crypto, going to be denied. Homeboy Jesus with the air dribble. This one should indeed kill it. V Hill Devils maybe walk yeah, away with a it. goal. And there's the dagger in the sides right there of the Saints. This series is going to be tied up one to one. Dagger in the sides, nail in the coffin. It is game number two for Ripley Raptors with only four seconds left up by two. A kickoff will not help them here. And uh, it, it's MRC Saints on the losing side. It's really brutal way to, for it to go down as well because Crypto nearly uh -oh. got them back into... Oh my goodness, they've got another kickoff. Just, I, 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 I am cast to cursing this. Maybe another kickoff will make the difference. <laughs> Listen, and we saw, I, I want to say, upwards of seven kickoff goals last week. And I was going to say, you literally just cast a first because I did it last week as well. Two seconds remaining. Let's see if this equalizer can be had. Does it go goes up. all zeros on the clock. Invor still has it up in the air. Super nice. Should have a touch on this one to keep it up. Ghosty instead clears it into the corner very hard. And it dies over on the blue half of the field. So the Raptors do indeed hang on. Win this matchup 4-5 to five to tie the series right back up. And I feel like, you know, when you're looking at Ripley Raptors and you're down, yes, you can uh, get goals back. Yes, you can defend Ripley Raptors. But if you are going up against Ripley Raptors, I, I don't really care what team it is in this group. You're probably not going to be able to hold the ball from them at zero seconds from your own end. They are just very quick. They're pressure heavy and they will send that down. I mean, I believed. I believe that, uh, you know, Crypto had a second touch there. Ghosty just unfortunately sent that one over into the corner. But I want to quickly point out Super Nye with a hat trick. 
as well as yeah. uh, V Hill Devils with a hat trick too. So it's kind of interesting to see both of the players who had a hat trick in that second place spot, not even being the MVP of their team. So really, really interesting to kind of see that one happen. Really, rarely ever happens where you, you see that second or the, the people who have a hat trick kind of be in that second place spot. So is, um, is that the real Dover in match right now? I feel like it is not. That's that's somebody no, no. remoting that's, that's into production. the computer, right? Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah okay. that's production. I believe that's Liam. <laughs> Our lovely out, producer man. Liam, <laughs> but lovely, lovely producer. I, I'm like uh, last week. You no, know, that's not. Yeah. That's not. We don't talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> so for, for, for you guys, it here, was, it no, was, no, it was no, no. producing last week. <laughs> <laughs> producing last week was amazing, <laughs> but no, hopping into <laughs> hopping into this next matchup, game number three officially underway i really feel like the saints are playing really really well uh even though there was a couple of mistakes there in game number two i really feel like this series is gonna be a lot closer than we thought and you only just got here in oce and i'm already trying to get you fired that's, that's i know just right cool. <laughs> i'm trying to keep my spot out here guys okay you should try to get some people oh! some, some new people Feel Devils with a top bin shot from well past midfield. In fact, that's before the quarter line on his half. Crazy long shot there. Yeah, that was a great shot right there. Be Hill Devils really stepping up here for the Raptors. It's pretty much been the face of the offense for the Raptors. Like I said before, a hat trick in that last game in game mm. number two. Game number one, I want to say he had a, he had one or two goals as well. I didn't get quite get the stats in game number one because there was a bunch of shenanigans happening but at the same time i really feel like he was up towards uh towards uh, one or two goals i might have to reassess here because uh you gotta, i gotta say v hill devils is not looking like any kind of third man here this is this is dominant by v hill devils right now yeah i mean i don't know why like rocket league has to have that traditional one two three man type yeah, that's situation true. I mean, look at what oh. happens like, as another shot goes through for Homeboy Jesus. That's going to be the second one here for the Raptors. I want to bring into effect, you know, the energy problem that, that they had. They had one man being Justin, two man being Squishy, three man being Garrett. And um, they switched it up. And this is why I think they found so much success is that so now Garrett G is like, you know, that number one man. Justin's kind of like that, that, that two man yeah. or vice versa. You know, Garrett might be that, that two man and Justin's number mm -hmm. one. Regardless, Squishy is filling that number three role. And I really feel like if you think about V1 as well, think about Daniel. He's like that third man as well. You want to have that third man be your great defender, that the best quote unquote person on the team who could kind of take over and get those individual plays for your team and get those clears as well that they desperately kind of need and put themselves I, in the best favorable situation. Okay. You're in a, you might be able to explain this to me. Where did Laniel come from? Because I don't get it. I, I'm uh, not on board for Laniel. I'm sorry. So, so Laniel stems from when he was with SSG and they were playing in yeah. the Winter Major. As you see, a goal scored here from Ghost. going to be down by one now. Uh, the Winter Major, the first one back, I want to say it was 2022, right? Was that the first yeah. one back? Yeah. Um, so that's where Laniel came from because Daniel, that was his first land. And there was just so much hype being generated around Daniel that it was his you know, first one and he was just, was just popping off. If you could think back, yeah. the only team that beat them was Moist, I believe, in game number seven. So... Um, Laniel just kind of stuck with him and uh, he carried it with him as well. So he does play a lot different on land uh, as most players do anyway. Mm. I, I feel like that was really his big pop-off performance at land though. And he, you know, that that is the pressure that's generated by competition and it just gets higher at land. But these players on field right now are, are facing that coming out into a high school league where many, many players have never experienced the pressure of a uh, of a competition on their hands before with something riding on it it does change the way you play like you said yeah there's a lot of pressure especially when you have that match on stream as well you can think back to week mm -hmm. number one or even the pre-qualifiers and stuff where a lot of players you know were nervous and you know you're you're out here in front of a couple hundred people plus two casters a lot of players not even having their games casted before professionally produced before so it's a lot of um mental anguish i guess you could kind of say they're not used to that kind of environment so i feel like that as this one more progresses it's, it's a good thing for oce but it's a good thing for these players as well because they get used to that kind of uh professional setting here it comes up the backboard still more potential yet mounting for ripley raptors in fact shut my mouth not potential that's an outright goal invor has somehow made this a shot yeah, just is this a an own goal right by Crypto? No, I, 
I, I don't think so. I don't think that Crypto nor Super 9 touched it. I think they just missed it. And then since Super 9 missed it, he was the first person there. Just Crypto the was the just thrown off his game. Mm. Interesting that that even makes its way in, but it does make it tougher for MRC Saints here. Super Nye left dead center of goal. An odd uh, defensive position there for a player I would say should be fairly used to back post defense and it does eventually cost them here that direct clear outward rather than looking upfield for Ghosty or even calling for the turn from Crypto means that it does make its way back to the net rapidly and inside at 117k an hour. Yeah, we see the Hill Devils now stepping up like we said beforehand, has himself two goals in this matchup. Like we said beforehand, just being that front runner so far, looking for that hat trick. That was a great pass from Invor from the corner. But at the same time, everybody getting involved on the offensive end here for the Ripley Raptor squad. Mm. Two goals right there oh, for Invor. Super nice. I'm sorry, two goals for V Hill Doubles, one for Invor and one for Homeboy Jesus. Homeboy Jesus is trying to make that two here. Invor as well, putting in his two cents, but it is getting away from them here defensively. MRC Saints look fairly comfortable right this second. Homeboy Jesus, though, might just break that. And the shot just inside post off the backboard. That's a good read. It's a great read right there. Homeboy Jesus just utilizing his boost, feathering it, and then having enough uh, awareness and skill set to, to follow up with that touch off the back wall. Just a beautiful goal in general. And that's indeed, I believe, his hat trick. And that's uh, actually, no, it's only his second goal. Hunting for that hat trick, I was going to say, right there onto that shot, onto the nets after that kickoff. The 45 seconds left, Gex. This one has quickly gotten out of control in favor of the Raptors. We go see very, very high there. But like you said, this is kind of out of control here. Ripley Raptors have gone insane. And uh, it's a big win here in game number three. They did have to sacrifice game number one, but aside from that, they want to make this a gentleman's sweep. Trying to hunt for the gentleman's Brazil at this point in time, too. Yeah, oh my goodness. A close one right there, and we have ourselves yep. a kind of an awkward rule one. <laughs> they were looking Crypto. for it. They wanted <laughs> the rule one. Yeah, they, they definitely wanted it. Only a couple seconds left in the clock. And <laughs> oh, they, no, they, they're, they're back, back in it. it. Yeah, they're not moving. <laughs> <laughs> this is Love one of the it. strangest forms of rule one I have ever <laughs> seen. I respect it too much. Exactly. I was going to say I respect it because of the fact that it's not a traditional rule one, but they didn't break it, so I <laughs> do respect so well. awkward and they just decided you know what this is awkward <laughs> enough that we just we just go from it this is it this is what we do till this game ends that's what they did i mean that's, you already had the lead at that point you already know who's going to win that matchup as well <laughs> for us it's the raptors five to one and they officially move on to match point in a two to one fashion right now so if you are the saints it's do or die time right now gex you have to step up mm, yeah there's a lot of mistakes like i said beforehand that the Rap raptors have been capitalizing on you have to play some damn near perfect Rocket League to force this game number five. And it's weird because we are still seeing that exact same promise from these players. The, the potential there that I was expecting out of MRC Saints. Every time Ripley Raptors make a large mistake, MRC Saints are good enough to capitalize on that. But they're too far between. MRC Saints has to step up and force more mistakes out of Ripley Raptors if they're going to score here to a winning goal line. Not only that, but think back to the game as well. Like the, the, the Raptors pretty much controlled the pace of play. They controlled the field possession as well. I could think back to a very few times where the Saints were actually on the orange half of the field. Um, for the most part, I really feel like it was just a lot of shots being from the Raptors, uh, forcing them back towards the blue half of the field. So mm. I think if they have any chance at winning this matchup, they're gonna have to force a lot of this contention over back towards that orange half of the field. So control the midfield line, you should be all right. Ghosty missing out on the boost here as Supernoy gets underneath. Good read. Crypto is there in time. This is good chance with V-Hill stuck in goal. The shot was on target, but Homeboy Jesus cuts it up. And now Invor to the backboard as it comes away. Game number four could be all she wrote here. If Ripley Raptors get the upper hand too early, it's a very promising lead for them, but they haven't got it yet. And MRC Saints are showing a lot more promise once again. Oh, Ghosty no. might be finishing that off, but it's a weak touch. It goes limp. And that's going to be disastrous for this attack. I just noticed that Homeboy Jesus is using the battle bus. 
<laughs> the battle bus. I just, I just realized it. I was like, oh my goodness, he has the battle bus out here. So he's actually trolling at this point in time. Uh, you look, you like to see, like you know, the, the cockiness, but at the same time, can you back it up? Is the question. Here comes Super Knight again. Crypto underneath. Back pass to Ghosty is a nice decision and it's paid off a big shot downfield ghosty is going to score straight away a one to zero lead for mrc saints this is exactly what they need to get back into this series yeah like you said it came off the tail end of that pass right there from crypto was finding ghosty knew exactly what ghosty wanted to do with it and probably called it out perfectly in the comms as well so Great utilization right there for the Saints to, to capitalize on that long goal. Saw that the Raptors were overextended just to tap it on the offensive side, and this is how they need to play this game if they have any chance to tie the series up. Here we go again, Super Knight. Tries to a bit of a whiff, sending himself upfield there. Doesn't really use the opportunity to stay upfield to capitalize on the positioning now. Homeboy Jesus will use his own great dribble. What a save from Crypto. Just barely gets high enough in time. The shot's still coming out, but everybody is pulling out what everything here to make these saves happen. Absolutely oh, ridiculous Nye. right now. Another save coming through for Super Nye. That's two saves from Crypto. Three saves from Crypto now. Another one. And two from Super Nye. And I want to say this is exactly... Oh what has been happening to the saints so far the raptors just kind of get everything going they start to suffocation as far as the boost goes and they start just firing yeah. shots towards the net of the saints and eventually something cracks and goes through gotta say i that that's some major respect from me from crypto and super Nye in particular both of them making not one but two near impossible saves during that exchange that's some crazy good defense out of MRC Saints, to pe to, particularly when you look at the fact they were just about completely out of boost there. Yeah, that's another dangerous situation right there, too. Mm. I was going to say Ghosty, Crypto, and Super Knight, all of them in the same vicinity. Oh. That's never what you want to see. Good 50-50 right there from Envor into, um, that was Crypto. Yeah. So, like I said, quickly, they gathered this ball right back up, and they head right back towards that midfield line. Crypto is going to go back for boost there. Send it under one here, and Crypto can follow. Now Super Nye upfield looking for something as Homeboy oh Jesus is going to send it to the backboard. Was almost dangerous, but nobody was ready for it from MLC Saints. And now it's back in their own half. They have to get back on that fantastic defense, but they need somebody willing to leave goal. Three men stack in goal means there is no pressure outward. The clears aren't there, and stuff like this happens. Invor hammers at home. And that was a good re right there from V Hill Devils, I believe, who was on the goal line just being a menace, going for bumps, going for challenges, trying to get the defense up in the air. And pretty much that's exactly what happened, which opened the door right there for Envor. Uh, was that's just that first initial threat of a bump or something kind of happening to the defense of the Saints. So good job from the Raptors. Another goal should be a breakaway here, finding its way to the right post. And that's V Hill Devils. He's going to pick up his second goal of this matchup. They are so awake right now. Speaking of, I just had a delivery of uh, coffee, so I, I'm going to be super awake in a second as well. <laughs> Ripley Raptors, though, they are on fire again, and it is looking disastrous for MRC Saints, who are on death row right now. Mom, where's my coffee? Gex has his. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I was just trying to get my order in as well. Homeboy Jesus gets his order in of a of a goal, though. Four to one now in favor of the Saints. A minute and 50 seconds left. And that's just a good, solid read right there. Mm, get them beans. And you know what? No beans there for the defense means it's going to be a tough one to save. MRC Saints continuing to look low in their own half. Even when they're getting back, they're kind of beaten out to the boost pads by Ripley Raptors so much of the time. It's been a very boost hungry game from Ripley Raptors they've just been devouring it in their opponent's half and that's exactly what we were talking about before this game even started the Raptors mm. do such a good job at just you know keeping the ball over towards the blue half of the field that's a good shot at least a good attempt look at this the hustle from all the Raptors just ball chasing at that point in time oh great but it's uh, it's, it's, it's it's tactical ball chasing though Gex like yeah. you, you yeah. want to have that breakaway um you know towards the other half of the field because you found so much success with it 
I was just telling you, I, I just formed a team myself that I designed to have ball chasing kind of as part of that playstyle. Yeah. There, ball, ball chasing is legitimate. It, it is definitely a negative terminology, I would say, for what you're doing there. But the speed and just keeping possession by a single player can absolutely be a strategy when used correctly. Yeah, I was going to say, usually typically people say like, um, ball chasing in a negative term, just like what a save, I guess you can kind of say as well. It's yeah. usually used in a negative term, but I tend to use it in a good in a good term. You know, just being a caster, analyst, whatever you want to say. Um, when I say what a save in a game, typically people get mad at me when I say it, but I genuinely do <laughs> yeah, mean like, oh my I, god, what a save. I had that as well. Like you, you're in game and you're used to saying what a save as a caster. Nobody thinks you're for real. Nobody. Oh, my teammates oh. absolutely hate me because I sit there and compliment like enemy yeah. teams like on their shots yeah. or double touches or something. And I'm like, oh man, what a shot. That was a tough read or something like mm -hmm. that. And they're like, why are you complimenting <laughs> they're them? I'm like, because enemies. I'm a fan of the game. <laughs> I'm a fan of the game. That's why. <laughs> I gotta oh, respect man. it. <laughs> exactly. Speaking of it's respect. It's like watching your favorite sports team, you know? <laughs> you gotta say, MRC Saints, they've gotta respect their opponents here. Ripley Raptors played a fantastic series. It is a gentleman's sweep, especially when you consider the fact that they did have to give that first game away, Invor making a bit of an error there on the uh, car swap mid-game. But look, he's learned from it. He didn't do it again, and uh, I don't expect that that's a mistake he will make a second time. Listen, I just want to say, had it not have been for that car swap, uh, you probably would have been right. We probably would have seen a sweep here. But since you, uh, since we did have the car swap and they did lose that first game, I was right. So they won three to one. I told you it wasn't going to be a sweep, Gax. I'm starting things off right here. No, definitely not a sweep there. And uh, as what we like to see. I'd, I'd hate to see that go down as a sweep. When there was so much promise from the opponents there, the, uh, the losing side really did put up a big fight. And uh, you got to respect that there is so much left for this team. They are coming back in uh, very, very hot this season. I think there is so much left for them to gain and regain now. Yeah, well, we have some more Ripley Raptors on the docket for us today in today's matchup. They're actually up next as well. Mm. They're going to be taking on SPCC Light and Tangy. I think I said three Cs. SPCC Light and Tangy after this break.
I'm awake, are you guys? <laughs> Welcome back. Coffee time is over, our break is over, and you guys are coming back for yet another matchup. I'm still here with Whoops. Whoops, what are we looking at? We're looking at a good matchup, man, potentially on our hands. Let's hop into the head-to-head -head real quick. We have, of course, the team you guys just seen win in a 3-1 to fashion over the MRC Saints. Uh, that is the Ripley Raptors Blue Squad. But now we have SPC Light and Tangy taking on the Ripley Raptors Blue Team. And uh, we're going to see if uh, SPCC, SPCC Light and Tangy you know, can step up to the plate, step up to the challenge, and take down this uh, red-hot Ripley Raptors squad, in my personal opinion, Gex. Well, they are red hot. You're not wrong on that. And uh, they've already been tearing it up in the practice match here as well the test for the ping as we uh, do suffer some uh, internet issues of our own i suspect on stream end you'll have to suffer through that with us for a little while longer hopefully it uh, clears itself up we have we have had a look at it though we aren't ignoring you guys in chat so let's hope that fixes itself <laughs> Yeah, we appreciate the feedback, guys. Honestly, we, we do mm. sit here sometimes and catch the chat. Sometimes we miss it, of course. You, we have a job and a show to put on, of course. But at the same time, when we do get to it, we do appreciate the feedback. Honest mm. feedback, not trolly feedback. Am I right, Gex? <laughs> Twitch chat's never yeah, right. Yeah, watch, watch us get, like, every message under the sun now. It's all it's all going to come in now. People looking for their shout-out. <laughs> like, oh, no, uh, the, the, we, we see uh, a pixel off here. Uh, <laughs> oh, no, there appears to be an error. Gex is on desk. That's the, <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. What is That's Gex doing here? Please, we gotta, we gotta pull somebody else into this one. Anybody Casting in the Twitch chat want to take his spot? We have mistake. the link. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Anyway, hopping back into this matchup, though, Gex, like I said, do, do you think that SPCC, you know, the St. Peter College, you know, this is Queensland versus Queensland. You, you let me know what you think about this matchup. Who do you think is going to win it? Mm, I, well, I mean, I want to say SPCC just because... You know, it would provide us with something different, but I don't think I can. I think Ripley Raptors <laughs> are still too hot for this. Yeah, I mean, the, like I said, just the matchup that we just seen beforehand should have been a 3 0 sweep uh, mm. over the Saints. I really feel like SPCC um, is just a little bit. Uh, do I say worse? Dare I say worse than the Saints? You dare. I, I might I say think it you a little just bit. Dead. <laughs> <laughs> how you would make those adjustments as well. Um, you see another air dribble over here from Homeboy Jesus. But um, this is why we, we believe so firmly into the Raptors is because of the fact that they have these mechanics that they really don't show when they're playing like on stream, on the game. They just don't show this kind of stuff. So it's just really, really weird and awkward. I've never measured the length of a dog by the time it takes to pat it before, but apparently Invor has a two minute long dog. That's a that's a really, really long pat. <laughs> <laughs> I mean that that is a that is a pretty long pat and I don't want to get that on my controller either, right? You know, so that dog here. Dog yeah, yeah, you don't want to gunk it up. You're going to get that yeah, uh, that stick drift from dog hair. That's Something, yeah. <laughs> you get something on there. Get, like, greasy hands on your controller, then you're blaming your controller. It, that, that does make me ask the question, is anybody using uh, KBM here? I, it seems to be a dying art, uh, keyboard players. I mean, it's just... In my personal opinion, there's just a, it's whatever you're comfortable with. You know, if you're comfortable with controller, if you're comfortable with keyboard, mouse, whatever it may be, I know a it's, lot of it's successful people. It's a bit of a learning people. thing, isn't it? I, I yeah, think I a mean, lot of people move sure. to controller because the muscle memory, when you're first learning to play Rocket League, is much easier to memorize for your, for your mind to get around. But yeah, the, the people who do just play on KBM, stick with it, they're some of the most mechy, most precise players you'll see. Yeah, and one of my favorite players to watch, of course, is Mush. Uh, she's a, a female Rocket League player. I don't think she plays for anybody in particular, but I think she is at that GC level as far as for K KBM. And you know, just some of the things that she does on mm. keyboard or mouse is just absolutely amazing. Yeah. But we know a lot of players as well from the, the APAC region who, you know, predominantly, yep. Yep. I think in that region, who, who they play on keyboard or mouse as well. Yeah, I mean, so. most of the Gladiators, who are yep. arguably one of the top teams there, maybe not after last regional, but Homeboy Jesus stepping up to make Ripley Raptors look like one of the best here. Yeah, Homo Jesus with a good side shot. Those are always such tough angles. And you see Luke right there on the goal line trying to save that one away. Just could not get the right read. Just very, very close. He was trying to force that one off the back wall. Just unfortunately, he didn't come up with that one. Pretty early first goal, though. And Yuke might be able to follow it up with another for SPCC this time. But it does go away off the backboard. 
It was good to see that effort there, and I have seen the individual prowess of these players. I think SPCC really suffers from uh, comm issues at times. Again, an open net there. I don't know if that was a demo causing that or if it was a rotational, communicational issue here. But yeah, no, no demo there. Just an open net provided for Homeboy Jesus, and he does not miss these. Two for him already in the first minute of the gameplay. Yeah, and this is what we were talking about. We saw Envor last week step up and be the hero of the team last week. And, you know, now we see Homeboy Jesus stepping up this week. And he has just been everywhere. The answer for the Raptors offense. We're, start, we're starting to see, you know, the other players, once they go up and have a lead, they start to be activated and it starts yeah. to take a lot more chances and risks and things like that. Oh. But for the most part, it's been Homeboy Jesus who's been starting <laughs> things off. But what a pass. What a shot right here from V Hill Devils, who gets the goal secured. I'm not going to yes, say stolen. Secure, secure, secured secure. Yeah. by Envor there. <laughs> Here in OCE, there's no such thing as a goal steal. It is secured as yeah. Invor picks up goal number three. I've gotta say, that was a brilliant play from V Hill Devils there. He he earned his part in the play there. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, I would say he, he got his goal stolen for sure. Yeah. Invor, he knew yeah. what he was doing there, but this is a good opportunity right here for SPCC. The, you don't use that they were knocking on the door, and Shadow was there <laughs> at midfield. Ook was there as well, trying to get themselves a pass as well, but did not work out is in their favor. Is it Uke or is it Uke? Like, like I, do you know the Australian term Ute? You know what a no, Ute is? Not. Utility no. vehicle. I know what so a that's, loot, a, that's, a, a that's like a, a tray back truck, I guess, for America. So what the, is it? Uke or Luke? Because I, I would just say it's I, like I, I Luke it's without Uke. the L. It's Uke like ukulele, I think. I would say it's Luke without the L, so I would just say Uke. <laughs> <laughs> Luke without the L. He's certainly not lukewarm. He is in here leading the points for SPCC, but hasn't gotten points on the board yet. And the Ripley Raptors are still forcing their own points onto board. Fourth one coming through. Homeboy Jesus collecting his hat trick. Yeah, I was going to say Homeboy Jesus just, you know, taking over, making these plays look easy out here. Just an easy read and nobody home for SPCC, Light and Tangy. Um, just a, a tough read as well off the backboard with Shadow, but set that play up basically. And Homeboy Jesus was just there, just keeping constant pressure on. But as you can see, Ook <laughs> scores this one. You were talking about him. He didn't quite add his name to the uh, to the overall score, but now he does. It's Chuck and the Uk, mate. That's Uk uh, coming through for me. <laughs> as uh... One to four is here. He's already been leading up the points. I think Uk does have the uh, advantage in mech here. Uh, we have to see. Shadow has had some really good plays, and I think Riza is definitely an actual third man role here. So I am keen to see this come through and uh, be a roster that's kind of a little bit more together here. Two minutes and 20 seconds left here in game number one still complete control are the raptors and we were talking about it before one of those teams that are just on the cusp of being you know towards the upper echelon of this tournament trying to regain some ground that they lost early on against some very tough opponents but they're doing a good job at doing that taking some of this ground back from spcc but they need to uh i feel like get a couple of sweeps under the belt too because i mean we were talking about the game differential last week me and uh, me and max were it's not a main contributor, main factor just yet, but it could yeah. be down the road. Game differential definitely is important as you kind of even up, especially if you're going out of this phase of the competition and you are looking at that tiebreaker situation. You do not want to be there. It's going to be separated by the game scores here. And V Hill now getting in underneath. Yuke is there for the challenge. And now V Shadow can tap away. V Shadow in behind. Uke to the backboard again. Okay, we, we need to settle this once and for all. I want Twitch chat involved. Do we have a do we have an admin in the uh, Twitch chat that can put up a poll for us whether whether it is Uke with a Y or Uke with a double O? <laughs> I, I want I chat mean, listen, involved. It's, it's just American accent versus <laughs> Australian accent. That's all it comes down to. And this is my firm. Oh my goodness, Invor. I'm going to read off of the ceiling. And that's going to be another pass for V Hill Devil. I was going to say maybe another goal for him as well, but in we're going to secure another one. But I'm, I'm just saying, this is why I always tell every player whatsoever to... <laughs> What are you laughing at now? <laughs> Invor is in the Twitch chat between oh, exactly. goals going, I stole yeah. it twice. I mean, secure. Oh, I see that, yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> no, but I'm saying like uh, I always tell every pro player, I'm like, if you if you don't want your name mispronounced, put it like phonetically inside your yes. bio. Yeah. Um, and I'll still mispronounce it for you. Don't worry about it. <laughs> don't, don't oh, Yuke is Yuke. It's Yuke with a Y. He's answering for us. Oh, just just take the privilege from Twitch chat. <laughs> oh my goodness. He's just okay. I'll call you Yuke. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez he, Louise. Uh, you guys don't get the inside here, but <laughs> Whoops just argued with this man on his own name. <laughs> it's going to get the second one here for SBCC. Uh, it's good to see B Shadow stepping up to the plate. I knew he was capable of really getting in here and getting these goals out. Rizza plays is still sitting a little bit behind these players in terms of, I think, even just hours played here. I think Rizza's a, a much newer player. Player, but it, I've seen some amazing, amazing work done by Rizza in just improving. He's put the hours in yeah. and the work over the seasons, and uh, he is coming up as a fantastic player. Yeah, I would say that as well. You know, Rizza has definitely come a long way. Um, the only thing I, I can kind of remember back, um, all the way back to week one, was SPCC Light and Tangy versus Kendron, and I think uh, Rizza plays was on top of the leaderboard there in game number one, and he scored the only goal. Of course, it was 12-1 to 1 at that point in time, but at the same time, you still have to kind of commend not being shut out and having themselves a goal as well. Well, that is going to be a game here for Ripley Raptors. They are looking very, very comfortable here. Game one, a big goal differential here, 6-2, to two, plus four for Ripley Raptors over SPCC. But... I gotta say, SPCC looked like they were kind of warming up into this. They were much more coming towards the end of that, kind of cut down the leads of uh, Ripley Raptors. It was growing rapidly, and they, they did get on the board there with those two goals. Yeah, if it wasn't for all the stolen goal, I mean, secured goals for Invor there, who has himself a hat-trick, by the way, and another hat-trick, too, for Homeboy Jesus. Um, a couple of those were just, you know, I would say breakaway plays that were in favor of the Raptors, and it just put SPCC on the back of their heels. So they had to be, they were forced back to that goal line and then they got themselves, you know, out 50 50 at that point in time, which the Raptors do so well, by the way, they, they win a lot of their 50 50 challenges. And that's what puts them in a favorable position to start to score some of those goals too. So that's what happened here in game number one. You saw a lot of 50 50 goals, a couple of like ricochets off the ceiling that were just good reads right there for Invor. So, and uh, hats off to homeboy Jesus as well, who, you know, had a couple of pop-off moments to push them ahead to that two to zero goal line. Uh, early on to get to get the Raptors more aggressive as that one progressed. So we have to see a lot more out of SPCC. Like you said, Rizza has to step up a little bit more. And we have to see, of course, uh, uh, Yuke step up just a tad bit more as well. So let's we'll see what happens. <laughs> really going to put the Y on the front. <laughs> Yuke. Yuke. It's coming through. Yeah, that's how we're pronouncing it for now. And he said it with a Y. So now we've got to really, really jam that Y in there. Ukulele. It's Yuke now. Yeah. Ukulele. Ukulele, I think you're exactly. Right. Does a uke have a tray back? That's 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 the real question. You know, how how much can a uke carry? That's. Yeah, I have no idea what a uke what, what, a tray back a tray back. I have no oh, idea no. what that means. We're out. <laughs> yeah, that's a blue screen, guys. <laughs> we will be back in game very shortly. But till then, we'll go to radio cast mode for you. Yeah, of course. I mean, I love radio casting. You guys get to stare at our faces as we progressively watch and look across the field and see what happens like this back and forth. So it is what it is. But at the same time, you know, this is still a 0-0 ball game. And you see Yuke bringing this one up towards the right-hand side. And as a shot, Homeboy Jesus saves the wave. That must be right back towards the midfield line. You're going to see Shadow and Envor both battling oh for that one, but goodness. a breakaway pinch goes back towards the orange half of the field. That? that wasn't a pinch, that was a redirect that I don't think you knew what he was making. That was crazy as an upfield play. Just came out from the corner. That It was a pinch out to the uh, redirect, but the redirect gave it some unbelievable speed great pass in the rule one keeps the net open and yuke gets the first goal of the game in fact making spcc actually up in the game for the first time in game two yeah and that's what we wanted to see as well we wanted to see yuke being activated on the offensive end it was such a good uh pass upfield and then nobody home for the raptors on the rotation back through so a little bit of that aggression working against them in that point in time we'd love to see the uh you know the offense starting to activate here for spcc we have a couple or a close shot right there for homeboy jesus but rizza plays is gonna score off of the save off in the air as well 
So we're, we're talking about we wanted to see more from you. We wanted to see more from Riza. This is exactly what we see. Two goals to zero now in favor of SPCC. SPCC, what a comeback in game two. Like I said, that last half of last game, they were heating up, cut down the uh, lead for Ripley Raptors, stopped it growing, and now not only have they stopped it growing, they've prevented it entirely. Not just a lead, a goal coming out of Ripley Raptors has not happened. The Raptors have the ball in their half of the field. Riza, a little bit of a mistake oh. there. Yuke does save it away. That was a shot from V-Hill Devils. Still three minutes and 15 seconds left in this matchup. So a lot of time to come back if you're the Raptors. But this is what we've been talking about pretty much all season long is that the Raptors really haven't been playing, you know, in that sweeping fashion, in my personal opinion. They're a good team. They can pull off the sweeps, Gex, but they really yeah. haven't done it just yet. You know what I love about this, the, the practice for the, the, the radio cast here, uh, is that if, if esports ever fails me, that's my backup plan. I'm going to every radio station I can looking for work. That's that's my that's my backup plan. Do you that's, want to do like the, the, do like the old school, like broad, like, yeah. the, uh, like the, oh, here we go, towards <laughs> the midfield line, two minutes and 50 <laughs> seconds left, and uh, Yuke is going to bring I, this one towards the back wall. <laughs> I wanted to bring it back to like a welcome back to AEL High School Radio. Mayhem, mayhem, <laughs> mayhem. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we need the uh, we need the uh, sound bites and everything. <laughs> oh, I have them. Wait, don't, don't we have those? No. <laughs> I have a Go XLR. I, I should probably in... figure out how to use it the right way and like start yeah, to send that through a I've microphone that well. way. You know, so uh, I never really I've messed around the, with it. I got the but I don't think I should probably use that. People might misunderstand. <laughs> oh, but we got to talk about the game. These guys can't see the game. Okay, two minutes left. There's uh, nothing happening in the game. No, no <laughs> content here. Uh, two minutes remaining, and uh, the ball is currently uh, being pro progressed towards the blue half of the field. Two to zero, still in favor of SPCC. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Shambles. Absolutely shambles right now. Absolute shambles. Two to zero. Not much changing right now. There has been some good pushback from Ripley Raptors. In fact, staying in their opponent's half for a while now. But there hasn't really been too much pressure mounting onto SPCC. Even in their own half, they've looked fairly comfortable. Shot from Uke directly at V Hill now. Ripley Raptors under fire again as the moment SPCC get back into their opponent's half, they look threatening at the moment. I love that pass right there from Homeboy Jesus. Just mm. pushing that one towards the net. Had to be respected by SPCC. And on top of that, I believe that was uh, V Hill Devils who was oh, knocking on the door there. as well. Oh. But what a save. The shot from Invor is going to be denied by Yuke. Fantastic panic save from Yuke there. But I got to say, the defense from SPCC has been great, not because of the individual saves being made, but because of the outfield passes, the outlet passes. But it's not going to be enough to keep them at bay forever. Invor gets a little bit of luck off of a bad touch from Yuke in the midfield. A double commit as well at the same time and an open net given to him. Two to one now. Ripley Raptors starting to make their comeback. They only have 57 seconds to do it. Yeah, this is, uh, I was going to say that as well. Two to one in favor of SPCC. But, you know, the Raptors do have the capabilities to come back in this matchup, especially only down by one goal. Homeboy Jesus fires a shot. This one's going to be a little bit too far to the left-hand side. It's going to be quickly gathered up and brought back towards the other end of the field. Shadow Whoa. shot going to be denied by Invor as well. That one looked like it had some promise on it, but Invor just got in front of it. It comes again, Invor. The pass down goes badly. Yuke right in front of the goals. Can't quite get there. Oh, and I see the Observer back in the match. We're back from the blue screen, guys. You're about to get gameplay. Yeah, I was going to say, right, right at the perfect board. time, too, towards the tail end of this matchup. <laughs> 15 seconds left. Riza trying to get this ball back towards. Homeboy Jesus, though, picks it up, intercepted. And oh it's going to be in as well. A dunk on top of the hood of the defender. It's going to equalize the scoreline. We'll see how long the tail end of this match is because there is a good chance we go to overtime here. Two to two with eight seconds left. I think that's a likelihood as we come through to the kickoff. Yuke is going to send it dead even with Invor there. Homeboy Jesus up early though. And it is parking the bus in goal from SPCC. They don't have the confidence right this second to go for it on zero. They want to take this in overtime and they will have to do so as we reach it. I was going to say, the Raptors were just waiting for the stream to get back up in order for them to, you know, get some yeah, more yeah. clouds oh! onto the stream. Oh, my goodness. 
That is a way to do it. Four seconds, a kickoff goal, a pinch on the kickoff. Goes super fast, wide of net, and collected there for the final shot. Homeboy Jesus, though, stepped up for Ripley Raptors when they were in some dangerous waters. Blech. Excuse me, I uh, threw up a little bit in my mouth. That was disgusting. <laughs> it really was. Like, everybody get so involved. He's not going to do a bass. He he d d does the most disgusting vomit sound whenever he sees a play he finds disgusting. It's. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I don't know my limitations yet on the stream, so like, I'm not going to push my boundaries just a little bit too far. But just uh, that was insane, though. I love to see it. I love to talk about kickoff goals as well, Gax. You know me; I'm a big fan of kickoff goals, and you know we've seen a lot of them here, uh, pretty much in the AEL th this whole entire time. Like I said, me and Max seen about seven kickoff goals last week, and the Raptors were probably uh, th had three of them. I, I would say to you know to keep themselves in. in favor or in promise of winning the matchups uh but everybody getting involved here on the offensive end for the raptors a goal apiece for homeboy jesus v hill devils and invor um so spcc played a heck of a ball game they really did control the pace of play the whole entire time you guys didn't get to see it but at the same time uh ripley raptors just wanted it more and they got it done in overtime mm -hmm. And the reason I mentioned uh, Homeboy Jesus was not necessarily the opponent's end. Uh, he really stepped up to bring their heads out of whatever place they were in there and get them back into offense because he worked the defense so hard. Homeboy yeah. Jesus was kind of performing all over field there where realistically, Invor and V-Hill Devils, they need it to be in their opponent's end before they're comfortable. Well, we're at the sea now. If SPCC can step up and, uh, you know, answer the task of the reverse sweep. The Raptors winning this matchup 2-0 so far on match point. For the most part, we've had ourselves a pretty good ball game. I would say game number one to game number two was definitely uh, a lot different of uh, feels. That game number one quickly got away from uh, Light and Tangy. But the Raptors did such a good job in uh, keeping that pressure on to them while they had so much offense, I would say, in game one. And then game number two, like I said, SPCC just had oh. so much. As you see, Invor going to miss his target, but a good follow-up touch from V-Hill Devils. V-Hill Devils, yeah, really followed that through well. Invor, the setup, though, the power of that to the backboard made that possible. And let's hope Front is a fan of Ripley Raptors, because we just got a, a nice little raid from Front. That's nice. Yeah, hands off the front in the chat. Thank you very much for the raid. We appreciate you so very, very much. If we had any sort of mod privileges around here, Gex, I guarantee we'll give him a nice <laughs> shout out. But Envor is going to shout out himself here with a pass to himself wrapped around in the corner. But just a, uh, a, a poor clear, I would say, there from Yuke. We're not in the business of making friends. We're in the business of making games. And Ripley Raptors are making it a game again here as they come up early. SPCC has not had the hot start they did in the last game. Yeah, it's just unfortunate. Like I said before, it's only a minute off the clock, so still a lot of time left. But once the Raptors starts to get going, it's almost like there's no looking back at that point in time. We were just talking about that. A resemblance or a, a reminiscent, I, I should say. It is back to game number one. But, um, you know, there still is a chance. There really is a chance here for SPCC. I want to see oh! them. Oh, my <laughs> goodness. I was going to say, I want to see them get it clear here. But at the same time, we have a little bit of luck right here from B-Hill Devils. You see the bounce and then the other bounce and the Shadow chaos. was just in shambles <laughs> in, on the goal line as well. So unfortunate right there for SPCC. Yeah, the uh, the crossbar coming in as a member of the team for Ripley Raptors there with the redirect down to <laughs> stop the save as it comes away. It's going to be Invor again. Invor looks like he's got his confidence fully back here. Well, apparently Front is a fan or a friend, I should say, of Invor. So maybe he's trying to show out now for well, some of his friends. Well, he said he knows him. Let's not let's not uh, get ahead of ourselves. <laughs> no, yeah, he no, he's, he's, he's That's showing not... out. He's showing out. <laughs> <laughs> what a shot again here, and the pass from Homeboy Jesus just chased up from Invor again. He's he's showing up just forefront. For the most part, he really has, and this is the reminiscence to Invor from last week. You know. Uh, we were just talking about how dominant he has been, but you know, for the most part, it has been the uh, Homeboy Jesus show um, this week, which is not mm. a bad thing. It really isn't. Like like I said beforehand, you you want to have a couple of people who are 
really good on your squad and on top of that can fit any role necessary Inborn doesn't necessarily have to be that one man homeboy jesus can step up and then we're of course well, we have Hill devils who's completely capable yeah. of scoring as well i mean you say that but it was Hill devils in the first series that really stepped up so all of the team has been active already in only two series today they have really really made an impact each and every member so yeah, Inbor exactly. even took a big step back La both last game and a lot of the last series so uh it is good to see everybody can kind of fill that spot when Invor isn't performing too standard the rest of the team stands up exactly I, I agree with you it has to be a team effort and for the most part it really really is for um you know the ripley raptors and that's exactly why i feel like they're such a good team and they have so much mm. promise because the more they play with each other guess what the, the better they're going to be so they're making way less mistakes than usual i've got to say as well actually their last game the exception but in general yeah ripley raptors look like their comms are far better than we normally see in saying that they haven't had the pressure on them of uh one of the big dogs in this group yet uh so we might see that change the, the mistakes come out when they're forced more by a better team here i, I didn't want to re bring this back up i didn't want to but at the same time i feel like it's prominent to the conversation we're having right now last week they did like i said beat linwood okay three to two and i i, I picked them to beat kendron as well and kendron is, is such a good team they really are yeah. top of the leaderboard most of the time i think they might be in second place right now uh we haven't had a standings update in quite some some time you know had some issues and things like that so we'll get that to you guys as soon as it's uh presented but i want to say back to that kendron game versus the raptors last week they got dominated so much that v hill devils i believe left the lobby and Ooh. um uh, didn't come back and didn't want to play the rest of the series yeah uh so but like you said the, the that's other the kind of stuff that holds series back they is what I'm trying to say. yeah yeah, that's yeah the kind absolutely of stuff that holds back. It, it is it is the pressure it's the mental for these guys and as soon as they get under that they do seem to fall apart on uh on communication and rotations but ripley raptors when they have that under check seem to be giant killers here they have the potential like i said yeah. earlier to take down the biggest of the big in this at least in this group yeah, I mean, they really do. Like I said, going back to that same series, Kendron uh, won that game number one, but it was a, it, it went to overtime, and they won that goal, mm. game by one goal. And then hopping into game number two, I'm not too sure what happened, but they were losing 5-0, to zero, and I think there was mm. still like three minutes left. So that's what led to the, you know, quote-unquote rage quit the V Hill Devils. So, I mean, they did finish out the series, and they did, uh, you know, what's it called lose it ultimately but at the same time like i said like you said they're the giant slayers they have the potential to pop off but it's just what team shows up this week is is, is the ripley raptors uh i, I guess Ooh. mantra every single week Invor has to be careful not to cut his team out as well when, when Invor starts to perform really really well he does get a bit of a big head he does come in he does take the opportunities from the teammates at times so Invor when he's popping off I'd prefer to see him actually using the mech he has using the speed he has to open up the field for his teammates I mean even the best players in the world shooting on a well defended net it's a much lower chance that they're going to score I think at this point in time, I think it's just one of those things where they know the game is over. It's five to zero oh, at this absolutely. point. And, yeah. You know, it was less than 60 seconds, that. so I don't really blame them mm -hmm. too hard. But we do have some zero second shenanigans. This one's off the top of another defender. It's going to hit the ground, though. And the Raptors are going to pull off a sweep here, Gex. We yep. knew it was capable. They were capable to do so, but it just wasn't. They weren't. They haven't done it just yet, I would say, onto the season. SPCC is their first victim. Yeah, I mean, last one effectively would have been as well uh, if it had not been for that first game forfeit. They were still up when they had to forfeit that one as well. So game one, had that gone the other way, probably would have been a sweep. They were able to do it in four games instead and led all four games effectively. Yeah, I agree with you. They really they really did. Like we said, it should have been a sweep. It could have been a sweep. And uh, who knows? Regardless, it goes into the history books mm. as a three to one victory. This yeah, one absolutely. is a three to zero victory over SPCC. But we do have a lot more Rocket League action on our hands here, Gex. Up next yeah. is one of the ones I highlighted. I think is one of the best games to kind of watch. It's going to be Kendron versus Linwood. You guys are not going to want to miss this matchup. It's going to be a banger Don't go anywhere. right after this break.
Hello everybody and welcome back to stream as we head into our third series of the day. Whoops you, we have had a great one so far, a really, really good showing from the Ripley Raptors so far as well, getting their win in the first series and a full sweep in the second. Buddy, who do we have to thank for that action? I mean, what do you mean for that? You mean the, the, the sponsors, the lovely sponsors that are above my located above my head right there, Gex? That's who you're talking about? The people who make this possible week in, week out, Gex? Those sponsors right there? We're talking about Predator Gaming, the gaming PC partner who provide the high-end focused PC solutions in both laptop and desktop, of course, powered by Intel. And then, of course, we have AOC Monitors, the gaming partner who provide best-in-class monitor solutions for gaming and all other needs. And, of course, you have... Indomi, I'm sorry if I say that wrong. I'm going to try this, Gex. Nope. Indomi, Bang the noodle on. partner, made with the high quality flour and selected ingredients and spices, a plate of Indomi, me goring, uh, will certainly brighten up your day. Try any of the flavors available today at your local grocer or at indomi.com.au. And of course, the most important one that we love to talk about is Game on Cancer, the charity of choice for the AEL who uh, much fun need cancer research projects with the AEL donating a portion of all student participation fees to this life-saving cause. If you guys want to participate, please pull out your phones right now, scan that QR code on your screen and head to the AEL's Tiltify campaign page, please. And thank you. Consider donating to that cause. Yeah, really, really important one there as well. So definitely get on board uh, support for cancer. And uh, you know what? I appreciate the the big effort on the Indomie call out there. Whoops, you ba you nailed it. That was that was all correct. Do what I can. Just, Do what just, I can out just, here. <laughs> yeah, uh, I just wanted to reassure you. You know that that was that was actually correct. So nice work. Not like Uke. <laughs> <laughs> you had to you had to put that dagger in there it's just like my father you know he gave me a compliment and takes it away that's backhanded okay? yeah I, I, i'm not allowed to give you too too much of a big head that's the problem <laughs> anyway uh, hopping into this divisional league play we have the head-to-head -head matchup on your guys' screen right there of course we're going to have the uh the toners taking down linwood like i said beforehand this is one of my favorite matchups out here this is going to be one of those ones that's going to be a true test of time. And I think it might be a battle for like the second, third place spot, maybe first, second place spot as well. Um, 
Correct. regardless. In game, we've I, got Kedron versus Limbo. I was going to say, I think it is Kedron. The Toners is the next matchup. Yeah. Um, I blame yeah, production sure. for that one. Pretty sure Kedron gonna say, is, is going to be that uh, that blue just, side here. Yeah, so. I was going to say, just like that, they, they fixed it. Like, like nothing ever happened. <laughs> Makes us look stupid now, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's It was never there, guys. Uh, anyway, yeah, so yeah, on this matchup, I was going to say Kendron versus Linwood. The next matchup, of course, is the Toners versus Linwood, too. So this is going to be a good test mm. right here. Both of these games for Linwood. The test, like the true test of, I keep mm. on saying test over and over again, of this roster <laughs> uh, in the AEL. Test, test, test. One, is this two, thing three. on? Hello? <laughs> <laughs> Hello? Everybody there? Yeah. Uh, is Kedron is there. Linwood have been probably our top team so far, but Kedron has shown some of the most promise of any other team I don't to know, me. So Kedron close. have been taken down. They have been inconsistent. Their peak has been absolutely enormous. So uh, I'm I'm expecting this to be an awesome matchup. Kind of glad that it wasn't the other one. This is the match that I wanted to see on stream. This is my pick for the day. This is going to be absolutely bouncing off the walls. Yeah, I was gonna say I, 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 I believe you. Uh, you hit the nail right on the head because this this Kendron team is so good. Took down the Toners last week in a three to one fashion, and then of course took down the Raptors in a three to zero fashion as well. So this is definitely gonna be the true test, I believe, of the battle mm. for the first second place spot because they yeah. go back back and forth, hand in hand, each and every week. So it's gonna be a heck of a matchup oh. out here. It's gonna have to be some picture perfect Rocket League as well. And I promise you guys, it's gonna be a heck of a. I, I can foresee this one going all the way to game five. Week number three is continuing here since qualifiers. These teams have been in their group stages battling it out. And like you said, this is probably the battle here between first and second place. Kedron getting taken down once in week one. Did sit a little lower than Linwood, but I think everybody saw that the potential was there. This is going to be quite the battle. Right now, Linwood are putting on the pressure. That's a good pass right there from Xavier as well. Levi did keep that one out, so he did recognize the pass was going to come from that corner and that pinch, but those are such difficult pinch plays or pinch passes, I would say, um, to perform because usually mm. nine times out of ten, you, you, you pinch it too hard and it goes around from one corner to the other. Levi back to backboard now and 50 feet away by DJ. Linwood do have uh, a little bit of a caveat here that they are playing without one of the main rosters. I believe it is DJ coming on as the sub. I could be wrong here. I'm not sure which of them is the sub. It's either DJ or Xavier uh, coming in for, for Linwood. I was going to say, I think DJ might be newer to me as well. I'm not too sure. I think they might have played before in the past. That name kind of sounds familiar, but I think Virgo. I'm not sure. I'm sorry. Virgo is uh, from the Toners. I'm sorry. I was reading the, uh, the wrong <laughs> roster there. Um, I was going to say, Virgo sounds familiar, but obviously wrong team. Um, yeah, you're 100% right. I believe it's uh, Matthew and then uh, Sweat is the, is the Sweat, other person who plays yeah, there. So the Sweat is the person roster. who they're missing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I believe it is yeah uh, DJ that is our sub in here and has been performing fairly well so far. Definitely just willing to get into the play. I think that's one of the major issues for subs. They don't get as much time scrimming, the practice isn't there, and then the confidence is lacking when they get into game. But so far, DJ has spent a lot of time in his opponent's half, leaving the uh, the defense and the important goal saves Ooh. to the more experienced players. That one is not found. He looked for the post, but it's Troby's goal after all. Yeah, this is such a tough read. That was DJ trying to pass that one up to Matthew. Instead, it was intercepted, taken away. Uh, I believe that was Levi who initially had the first contact. I'm sorry, no, that was... My apologies, not Levi. That was Def who, who first had the contact that passed upfield to Levi or to Trophy to score that one. So my apologies on that one. Trying to break down the play. Whoa. Kind of got lost in the sauce. But I was going to say, DJ looks like, yeah, you're right, 100%. Just feels a lot more comfortable in this one. Um, than what you said, used to a, a, a sub plane under these circumstances. Troby to the backboard now. Still, Linwood are clearly suffering with their sub, not quite as practiced on as they would be with Sweat. We saw Sweat come up as one of the key players for this squad as well, and without him, Levi has the net to shoot on. An awkward defense makes this an easy shot with some power, and he does find it. Yeah, Kendron's being full-fledged activated at this point in time. Uh, you think back probably two minutes ago was the last point in time where we've seen 
a breakaway of any sort of situation right there for Linwood. And for the most part, Kendron has been controlling this one and keeping it on the orange half of the field. So Matthew and Xavier are going to have to step up. DJ going to need to Whoa. see a little bit more. Matthew almost slots that one in the upper 90. Coming away now, Troby underneath is going to take good control of this for only a moment, though. You've got to say, Linwood are peaking on speed here, particularly looking at Matthew and Xavier. They are just absolutely everywhere right now. Troby there before DJ. Now, Matthew off the crossbar. Troby to keep them safe, but there's good pressure from Linwood. This might be their chance back into the match. And with a minute 24, it is important they get on that now. Still, knocking on the door. Oh. Cannot find the key to open it, though. Levi with a huge save. DJ now in the corner. Has has possession still. Matthew with a good overtake, though. Not going to really mean much, though. Troby was there to read and pretty much pick apart that oh, defense. Good bumps. bump play as well. DJ going to save that shot away from Troby. Still in trouble, though, is this Linwood squad. This is why, despite Kedron having lost a match there in week one, I was always so confident they could bring it out because they are so well fleshed out as a roster. Going and using their position on every play with those bumps, with the aggression, the defense is coming through as well. Linwood are really going to suffer if they are not at peak performance. and You just can't be with a sub. I mean, I, I would agree with you on that one, but at the same time, they have to have some sort of, you know, uh, confidence into DJ as yeah. to why he would get the oh, start absolutely. today too. But at the same time, like you said, I really wanted to see. I don't think it, it's, there's nothing there against the sub. Don't get me no, wrong. No, no. It's just the amount of practice the team gets with them. You don't prioritize scrimming with the sub. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. Final seconds ticking away. Two minutes, or I'm sorry, two to zero in favor of Kendron. Another shot coming through. Levi going to save it away. He's going to bounce back towards the orange half of the field, and that's where it's going to lay. Kendron, take game number one over Linwood. And I do have the updated brackets, or as far as the standings go, uh, Kendron currently sitting in second place. I, I, I would still bump him up to first place because Ripley mm, Raptors, yep. you know, played those two games. So Kendron in first place, Linwood down towards that, uh, you know, third place spot as well. And the Toners, the next matchup on the docket, we have uh, going to be taking on Linwood. So that's going to be a huge match for Linwood as mm, well. Yeah. Um, so this is definitely going to be a true test of uh, Linwood's roster. And like you said, very, very detrimental not to have the starting team. But at the same time, I, I still can see big things happening with them mm. on the horizons. Actually, with, with DJ on the squad, that Toners game is going to get really interesting really quickly. Uh, yeah. That should be a very, very good matchup if Linwood don't adjust quite perfectly to the new roster here. You, you just see the potential from the team's risen to so much more frequently from set rosters that have been playing together for a long time. DJ has been around. I have seen the name many times, but Linwood are not going to have the experience they have with Sweat. So it is definitely an impact and it might just make that Toner's game, like I said, a, that, that bit more interesting. Up it into this matchup. Still with the possession it is going to be Kendron. They might even score first here. Not really too aggressive in the opening seconds of this matchup. Starting to see a little bit more aggression and decision-making right there for this Linwood squad. They're going to start off in front, courtesy of DJ's goal. But I really think you would agree, agree with me on this one, Gax. Matthew, Matthew hunting for yeah. that demolition on the goal line. Really set this one up. And that's why you go for it. It's not even necessarily necessary to get the bump itself. The pressure can be enough. You chuck that in you scare the defense you put the pressure on and oftentimes it'll open up the goal for you on its own that pressure xavier now needs to get himself out of a pressurized situation death on for the shot but it does get away troby now has been a bit of a carry for this team at times might be needed on goal line as levi does wow. get to it that was such a good defensive performance right there from kendron like you oh, said, Levi, Levi was there, careful. Troby was there. Not done yet, though. Matthew knocking on the door. We're starting to see that aggression right now from Linwood. But at the same time, is one goal going to be enough to push past this tough Kendron squad as they're starting to show off their defensive uh, capabilities? Troby out past midfield. Xavier 
Puts it wide of his own net here as Troby comes through. Xavier gets back to it again. Brilliant defense there. Sends it wide and then makes the save on the second time around. Now another one. Xavier going to make another save for himself here. That was earn himself Xavier medal pretty early in this game. The pressure's starting to mount, though, in favor of Linwood. Oh, Xavier with a good far stretch, good far clear lead by Husky Ariel for that one. He does do just that, keeps it out temporarily. Troby, a little bit of a missed touch right here. Double commitment over into the corner for Kendron. Not going to result in anything from the offensive end, but we are going to see. Oh, oh my goodness, oh, what a good Levi. overtake right there. And that was such a tough shot to oh, save, but it, it does happen. And Daph on the other end ties up the ball game. I just don't think you 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 shouldn't see this coming. Def reading that off the backboard for a boomer that only barely has a bounce in it. DJ would have had to be in goal to stop that one. A brilliant shot, huge counterattack, and suddenly this is an even game. Yeah, I can't believe that was red either. Like you said, that's just, how do you read the first initial shot and then Levi's touch off the mm. back wall? It was such a heads up play from Kendron in general. Here comes Troby now towards midfield. Levi, oh, Levi. follow-up touch. This one might waterfall down waterfall, and still get the yeah. goal. There it is. Levi going to answer right back. And Kendron take the lead. Great read, but what do you expect? These guys are GC. They are all over this every day of the week. I remember back in previous seasons of RLCS where we would have been impressed out of our minds by a waterfall read. And now it is such matter-of-fact stuff for anybody in GC. Anybody in champ level as well, you start to yeah. see a lot, a lot of the, uh, I would say, um, reads and the mechanics start to trickle mm. down the ladder. You even start to see a couple of, uh, you know, diamonds start to, you know, pull off some pretty crazy air dribbles, flicks, yeah. whatever it may be, you know. So everything kind of trickles down, and the sports of Rocket oh. League gets so involved. Oh no! Speaking Levi. of which, look at this double touch off the uh, sidewall here from Xavier. Xavier, yeah, gets an amazing touch here. I think it actually was covered. Oh, no, Def gets absolutely sniped out by Levi, and Levi did not find the clear or the post out. Unfortunate, but the results in the equalizer. Linwood playing such better Rocket League than, than, than that game one. This is like night and day difference with the rotations, with the aggression. Look at the mind oh, game no. from Matthew, oh, who no. just has an open net <laughs> dead the rights. Wow. <laughs> That's disgusting. <laughs> there we go. Matthew <laughs> is filthy with it, and it goes right dead center of goal because that creates an open net opportunity. What a play. Yeah, that was that was a thing of beauty, and he knew what he was doing there, too. If I could just beat this one person right here, it's going to be an open field, and that's exactly what happened. So two unanswered goals now in favor of Linwood. And that came off the back of two unanswered goals from Kendron. So back and forth action we have here. Oh Gets my off! goodness, Troby! No! Is this a Sting Pop? Oh it my is. goodness. This is the highest speed Sting Pop I have ever seen in my life. It is. Oh my goodness, that is insane. Let me pick my jaw back up for a <sighs> second. That was disgusting. <laughs> what is going on out here? These teams... Kendron and Linwood just showing out, not necessarily for the stream, but just showing off the mechanics and the skill set and just the differential of levels from that first to second place spot. I don't think it had the final flip in it to officially be a sting pop, but that's that's close enough in my books. That was mental as a play. That's probably the highest level of mechanical skill you're going to see in a goal from this group at all unbelievable way to get this game evened up and if they don't win it based off that they're gonna be filthy they've just earned it but it's not there yet dj trying to make it so as troby gets on the backboard to read away but it comes off of the offense great pass back downfield but the bump not found on matthew i was gonna say troby was there he had the bump he was it was sized up but he just could not catch up I believe that was Matthew, like you said, on the goal line. A little bit of shambles right now as the defense. DJ sit with like little to no boost to work with. 30 seconds left now in this game, number two. 
Nice pinch pass over from the wall from Troby. Nobody there to answer it, though. Levi, follow back. Nice dunk. Oh, right there from DJ. Matthew save. tried to secure that one. That was so speedy, but Def still keeps it. Def just there in time, but this is a fight. This is what we were expecting from Kenwood. Kedron and Linwood. DJ is fitting into the squad now on Linwood unbelievably well. Every single player in the game, not just on a team, has a single goal in this right now. All participating and at such a massive level. You've got to say, Troby is coming up with player of the game, though. Xavier, defensive player of the game over here. Three yeah, saves true. already. Look at Troby, though, trying to go for a ground pinch. She is mixing it up on the offense. Almost catching the defense off guard. Just didn't have enough boost to catch up to that ground pinch. Matthew. Met at midfield from Def. DJ. Keeping that pressure on to the backs of Kendron. Oh. Trophy off the back wall. So dangerous. Doesn't really get to uh, get the final clear, but it does go over towards the orange half of the field. Good control by Matthew. Levi reads just high enough to stop the progress of that goal. Out to Def now. Open that opportunity, but no power to the touch. An awkward collection means Levi will have to take his shot at goal now 47 seconds of overtime and it is intense already yeah but Linwood's in trouble right now they're working with little to no boost Troby and company doing such a good job taking the resources away from them he could have a breakaway right here Matthew has 100 boost and you have the air dribble he does the second oh touch my coming goodness, through the, demo. the, the demolition and the double touch off the back wall in overtime Matthew does it what a beautiful play to finish it it's a shame for Troby after getting probably the goal of his lifetime in this match but Linwood fight back past it they are not overwhelmed by the pressure and they step up Matthew Scoring the last one and stepping up as MVP for Linwood. That was such a good game number two right there. I cannot believe what we just witnessed, guys. That was some of the best offense I think we've seen yeah. all season long. And this is exactly why this one was circled on my list as like the game of the week, if not the game of the whole entire season. Like you said, unfortunate that Linwood's not at full strength, but DJ stepping up to the plate, having himself one goal, respectable numbers on the defensive end, two, two saves, and you know, like you said, everybody getting involved to push past Kendron in that game. Actually, insane stuff out of uh, both sides here. Linwood, even performing with sub, just uh, stepping up to the mark. The DJ has come in and impressed the pants off me. DJ is definitely here looking good for this. Uh, this this is main roster stuff to me. I mean, that just goes to show you what they have in the uh, in the tank. I, I guess on the on the bench is what you can kind of say. I want to reference the NBA real quick. You know what I mean? And you have a player that can yep. come off the bench and score yourself 30 points and still keep your team uh, in contention uh, to push past some of the better teams out here. That's that's just something re uh, remarkable, I guess you can kind of say. Yeah. I gotta say, it might be hitting peak there to do it, but that to me looked like RLCS gameplay in, in that last game. Matthew is stepping up again to try and push the teams to that level with goal number one for Linwood. Yeah, Matthew is doing a good job stepping up as well. Um, stepping up on the offensive end, kind of being like the, it looks like that front runner to try to set everything up here for Linwood. And I think he's doing a good job filling that role. Like you said, DJ just kind of being that free roamer, maybe being that third man, but he's just kind of filling wherever he has to. And Xavier, of course, not necessarily been quiet, but really hasn't left his mark out here enough to uh, essentially, I guess, kind of be warranted to talk about. Mm. I, I, I think it's fair to talk together. about RCS together as a team. here, though, because Matthew has made an appearance there, if I'm not wrong. And possibly might have actually seen DJ make a run through qualifiers one time as well. So uh, there's, there's names that you will see pop up here. And like we said earlier, some of the best players in the world, 16, 17 years old, coming through. So you will see them appear here at times. DJ just misses that shot on goal line. Unfortunate, but like we said before, I love to see the future of RLCS here for mm. Oceana. This one's a nice little, I was going to say, not waterfall necessarily. It's going to re-up that back backboard, but you still have the follow-up touch that's going to be dangerous. And for the most part, Lynn would do such a good job at, uh, you know, keeping that one at bay for the most part. But Kendron Matthew. is knocking on the door. Mm. 
Linwood get a good clear there. Matthew Neely getting an open opportunity, just closed up in time. Kedron are good at doing that though. Their rotations, they may leave a little bit of a question, but it's always answered right when it needs to be. They close that door right on time. Matthew coming through. Good read by Levi now, and it's a bit of back and forth action, which you like to see in this game. Always gets this competitive. Like you said, very similar to RLCS level caliber play here. Troby playing some mind games, going for that pinch again. Covered up on the defense though. And that's just a guessing game. That's a good shot. Good recognition right there from Dev. Yeah. It's like a like a free goal opportunity in uh, real soccer. Taking a shot there. The penalty goal does go in from Dev. He chooses his bottom left corner correctly. Yeah, we could have seen maybe DJ be a little bit more patient on that play, but at the same time, at real speed, it's such a tough read and such a tough ask to kind of, uh, you know, you're trying to come out the box and try to challenge that one early, but you're not expecting, you know, just such a calculated shot, I guess you can kind of say, from the offense mm. and just being there so fast and so speedy on the offensive end. But nonetheless, oh, the equalizer you. is found, and the pressure right now from Linwood is just being ridiculous. I mean, you could call that ball chasing there as well. This is what we were talking about earlier about that. Yeah, it has some negative connotations, but it works really well when used correctly. Xavier makes five touches, keeps pressure on for ages. Eventually, that generates lack of boost, and DJ capitalizes off of the backboard pass from Xavier again. Yeah, I'm looking at the boost right now of most of the people. Levi, zero boost while he was in the net, but DJ being such in favorable position, especially where uh, Def V was there off the backboard, just missing contact. And then, you know, getting that read in general from DJ just shouldn't have been there. You know, that that, mm, that ball yeah. should never have been in that vicinity. But at the same time, the awareness of him is just remarkable. Oh, Matthew, Matthew, there it is. Just below crossbar. Everybody is hitting backboards. And Matthew is stepping up once again. I don't understand how he had so much control over this. Yeah. This is insane. He went from a left air roll to a right air roll. Or vice versa, a right air roll to a Which left air roll. Sounds simple, right? Yeah. You go and practice that. That's insane. <laughs> that was so, so yeah, ridiculous. He's been playing rings maps. I don't know what he's playing, but sign me up. I'm there for it. <laughs> Downfield. Death now. Reads in the midfield to hold that high. Xavier up early, trying not to waste too much boost on it and does use the rest of it to make the challenge. Oh, big mistake by Def, and it does cost them. Matthew gets his hat trick and Linwood step up a minute 30 left and they might have this in the bag. Yeah, I love what Matthew does there. He literally just puts the softest touch so he can have the ultimate control over that ball and then he just secures it with that flip reset as well. Uh, I don't think he actually got the flip reset on it, but he, he definitely utilized his, uh, you know, frontward momentum, I guess you could kind of say, with his car. Troby now. Matthew with a great read and cut through. Comes off the ceiling, no shot found. Death has good control here. It goes down to some slow play at times because these guys are trying to generate pressure and sometimes just having that ball hanging there, making it awkward. That's what they need. It wow. works. DJ is there to collect again. And the sub is stepping up with two goals. Yeah, like I said beforehand, Matthew's just being, being this front runner. He's just, you know, pretty much in free play out here and uh, not even paying any respect to the defense uh, whatsoever of Kendron. So he needs to uh, keep on doing what he's doing. If Linwood is going to have a chance to push past Kendron, but Kendron oh, needs to have an goodness, answer. DJ, Patrick. Doesn't say Kendron needs to have an answer for Matthew, but DJ's been popping off as well. Popping off indeed. A bit of an error there from Kedron, though. Two coming out of that back corner. And it means the rotations did have some problems there from Kedron, but I think they've admitted defeat on this one. As they approach Brazil territory, they will remove themselves at least from that threat. 52 seconds left on board. There is technically a world in which Kedron comes back from this, but mathematically possible does not make it plausible. Yeah, I, I, I think it's pretty safe to say, especially the way that Linwood's been playing, that uh, this one's in the bag, I, really, I believe, for them. And, mm. you know, they're going to force, basically going to be on match point at this point in time. But, yep. yeah, that's... Uh, <clears throat> 
just a ridiculous read right here from Matthew DJ. It's just under With control. With the 50-50, yeah. Uh, this is such good gameplay from Linwood. They just always have control of this ball. I don't know where this came from after game one looking like it was going to be Kedron's series. Linwood just are dominating the field. They heard you, Gax. They said, well, they heard me at least and said, hey, DJ needs to step up. Guess what? DJ stepped up. Oh, so, yeah. I should be a coach out here. Look at Xavier, too, going to add his name to this tally. There is an, uh, there is an eight to two. I think it's Mexico. Uh, I yeah. That's, uh, yeah, I think it was. It's yeah, usually, I think I usually refer to the other team in that matchup when naming it, but I can't remember who it was. So, yeah, it was Mexico going down that eight to two. Probably a bit more expected than the uh, the seven to one though. A lot of people With in general just playing. know the uh, know the the Brazil. That's what yeah, a lot of people exactly. just know. It was so famous. Such a big match in the history of soccer, football, whatever you want to call it. We are in Australia, so let's settle with soccer. <laughs> Troby reads in and gets another one for the road here, but it is going to be Linwood's game. Eight seconds left, just a tick down. Yeah, this is what we were talking about. The comeback was, you know, could be possible, you know, with, with the amount of time that was on the clock, but at the same time, I think that, like I said, the way that Linwood has been playing, to, for them to give up like five goals in the matter of 60 seconds was just an impossible task for you know Kendron. They're they are definitely making it look a little bit um better, I guess you could kind of say the scoreline goes, but not gonna matter. Linwood's gonna move this one or win this one and move on to match point eight to three. A huge statement match from uh Linwood here. They say if we can do eight to three against Kedron with a sub. Who's going to step up to the plate? Nobody I mean, is taking Linwood down playing like this. I was going to say, is he a sub at this point? Because the way that Yeah, DJ's I know. This is, playing, this is main roster stuff. That's what I'm saying. The way that Linwood is playing right now, this is this needs to be taken into consideration. I'm not too sure. Mm. No disrespect to Sweat whatsoever. But at the same time, you have to kind of uh, applaud what Linwood is doing out here on the pitch. Yeah. I mean, Sweat normally steps up as one of the key players for the team. I've seen Sweat parry in individual games. So it, it isn't a shock when he does so. But when you see him replaced out for a sub, you do not expect this kind of performance out of the sub. And yet he stepped up as one of the most crucial players of this team time and time again in the last two games. I agree with you on that one. I really do. Such a good take, and it's been such good gameplay as well. Competitive. Matthew with a good shot. This one's going to have to be respected. It's going to be off the top crossbar. Oh. I mean, uh, it's going to be saved away by Levi. Could have found himself the top crossbar, but regardless, we still see a ton of pressure being generated from Linwood. DJ was demoed away there to try and release that pressure, but Kedron slowed down the play, kept it in Kedron's half. Now that blue side. Does get drained of boost while the respawn comes up. They do get the chance to counter attack now. Troby on the backboard. It comes back to him, but a miss there. Matthew bring it upfield. Dangerous situation. Levi doesn't quite get a clear away. A dangerous touch does lead for more opportunities for Linwood, but they escape unscathed for the time being. Good defensive stance right there. Troby, this is amazing. I was gonna say Troby just doing the most right now. He, he he's been literally single-handedly oh. carrying two mistakes right there from Linwood. No one's gonna capitalize on that one from the Kendron side of the field. But Troby has been single-handedly, I believe, in my personal opinion, keeping Kendron into this hmm. ball game. Whether it be yep. on the offensive end, uh, some of these clears that he's been generating, it's just been a thing of beauty to watch him kind of perform out here. It just really hasn't been his teammates Levi and uh, Dev V stepping up and trying to uh, you know I guess have the follow-up touches that are necessary. Yeah. I agree. Troby, every time he makes touches, they're super crucial, but it's not really generating the points out of them in this match to reflect that. Levi, in fact, the only one with stats Ooh. right now, and he will continue to be so. Def will get an assist and a shot here, but it is a Levi to get apparently an unshot goal if you're looking at the score. I do this so many times, Gex. Like that flip that Dev V just kind of throws into mm. it at the last second. You don't need that flip. You just need the initial contact, the inertia, or the momentum, I guess you could kind of say, from your car to hit that one into the net. That's a mistake that a lot of lower level players do, and that's why a lot of those results in misses. It's so lucky and so fortunate that Kendron kind of walked away with a, a goal there in that situation. 
BJ now trying to get one back for Linwood, who have dropped the ball a little bit here in this game. They are one away from a win here. If not, it will see the full best of five come out. Linwood have to score, but it's on their goal line. Brought away by Xavier. A good demo there does open up the opportunity for the defense to carry it away. I like what Troby did there. He still kept with the ball, even though he had no boost whatsoever. Yeah. He just knows that his presence being felt on the offensive end when everybody's pushing up is going to be respected by the defense of Linwood. But realistically, he just had no boost. And he couldn't really do much with the ball. So the communication there, Dev V taking over that ball in that situation, just uh, it worked out for them. But at the same time, they still didn't yield any goals from it. I, I actually went through a phase where I forced myself to not take 100s, to, to, to rely on pennies and lower boost situations, just to just to kind of make sure that I had the confidence to do so, because it is a higher rank thing to be able to just rely on, on the pennies around the field, to, to, to play on low or even no boost situations and make yourself usable, yeah. to, to just use your positioning around the field, no matter what the situation is. I, I think it's funny that you say that because I was just thinking last night when I was playing, I was like, I feel like I go for 100 pads way too much. Like mm -hmm. I take myself out of the play just to hunt down a 100 pad where, you know, a lot of people always say boost over ball or yeah. sorry, ball over yeah. boost instead of boost over ball. Um, basically, if you have like 60 boosts, you can go with that rotation yeah. and pick up some you of can reach pads ceiling and, with that. Yeah. And th that's what I'm trying to say is like I'm trying I'm trying to like reevaluate my gameplay. Mm. And it's funny that you kind of say that because, you know, I never really thought about trying to never pick up 100 pad in the game. Well, it's interesting because, uh, it, you know, even at the highest level, you have to give yourself reminders and stuff as well. The, 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 uh, that's why you continually see rank uh, X players stepping up uh, RLCS players, going into dribble training, going into rings maps, because you have to keep on top of this stuff or you wow. will forget it. Xavier is on top of his training, striking one true and evening us up. I do, I do suggest if you have practiced this stuff, go back and do it again. Yeah, I just don't like the touch right there initially from Levi. He didn't really have any boost, nor did some of his teammates as well in that position. So it's a good solid clear off the backboard from Matthew, and that's why nobody was there to essentially answer that strike from Xavier was because nobody had boost there. So good job from Linwood recognizing uh, the, the lack of boost there. And on top of that, equalizing this one as it takes down to the 35 seconds. Yeah, I still do the same thing. Uh, even even though I've practiced that every now and then, I'll just catch myself that uh, realize for the last week I've been relying too much on the hundreds, go back to it. But yeah, Ooh. definitely practice put out by these two teams because we are neck and neck again here. We've seen Linwood peak, but when they aren't right at that peak, Hedron is right on their tail. The final 10 seconds here in this ball game, looking at a potential overtime situation. Of course, Linwood on match point. Oh. This one, oh my Ooh. goodness, a huge miss from Dev V to get this the one pressure. done in regulation. Still one to one, still with the pressure is Troby, and that one's going to be denied and taken away from him. So we do find ourselves in a game number four overtime. Oh, the choke is there. Def misses the opportunity, would have put himself on board. But he's going to be back to Pedron's defensive side. Small touch from Diva. DJ does go to Def now. Xavier into his uh, the corner and will grab the opponent's boost, but no real pressure there. They're playing very safe, and you do often see this when you hit overtime. Both teams so keen, just making sure everything is defended. Interesting to see Troby up there like, yeah, trying to go it. for a bump. Yeah, I was going to say that one just on the rotation back through, not in favor of Kendron whatsoever, just overextending on the opposite end. Linwood make them pay, and they take down the big dogs in this mm. matchup in a big way too, Gex. And that is a massive thing to be able to see Xavier up, hit the backboard with the ball and go, right, it's over. He gets those. You know it because these players are so solid. They just know what they're doing. And that was exactly what we saw out of Linwood there. They just knew what they were doing. And after their last game win, I got to say they earned that. Kedron looked fantastic, don't get me wrong, but Linwood looked absolutely peak. Yeah, that was ridiculous. We were talking about how Xavier needed to step up. Xavier just, just showed out as to why mm. he's on this team. The double touch in overtime, such a clutch situation. DJ stepping up big time game two as well, or game three, my apologies. 
um you know stepping up him with a hat trick of his own and of course matthew the front runner in that game number two and three basically with a hat trick in both of those games as well so i mean just ridiculous amount of performance right there from linwood and we thought it wasn't going to be a good performance thinking all the way back to game number one where kendron was just putting on a show at that mm. point in time we were questioning as to how DJ was going to fit into this roster. Well, I guarantee we are thinking differently now about the yeah. starting roster of Linwood. And now we're now we're wondering how Sweat is going to come back into this roster. Exactly. <laughs> DJ really ascended himself there. Looked like we said earlier, RLCS level. That was an amazing, amazing demonstration of RLCS level gameplay. And you only get there by being pushed to that point. So let's see if there is more left to be pushed to because we've got one series left today. Let's head on out to a break so we can get to that as soon as possible. We'll see you on the other side.
Welcome back, everybody, to our last series of the day, and do not let it dis disappoint you, because Linwood is back to thrill again. Yeah, Linwood's with us. If you guys missed it, you guys missed an exciting matchup. They took on Kendron, but they won that matchup. They lost the first game, came back, and won the next three, so they won it three to zero. But now they have another tough ask on our hands right now, Gex. They have, of course, uh, the next matchup on our list, which is going to be the Toners versus Linwood. Well, toners, they look pretty all right in uh, training. I may have won v 3 them for a little while. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I got to call it out, you know? Like, they're, they're going to play me in, in warm-ups. That's what's going to happen. I mean, yeah. I mean, uh, you get a lot of respect around here, Gex. And, uh, of course, you know a lot of these players, too. But uh, you uh, you have the advantage that I don't have, which is uh, the ping. I'm currently sitting at about 250 <laughs> ping. So these guys think I'm just trash out here. But, hey, you come over to NA servers, US think. East, I'll still lose. <laughs> That's not how I expected you to finish that sentence, but all right. Uh, you've, you've got the challenge, Chad. Head on out to US East and uh, whoop whoops you. Uh, yeah. Mentor and Grammar Toners, though, coming into this one. I don't know how you step up to what Linwood just presented. I don't know if there's any team in the competition who could right now, but it was only when they were at their peak. Game one performance, Toners have a shot against. Yeah, I mean, I was going to say, Linwood, the way that they looked, it looked so just dominant, so good. DJ fit right into the uh, mm. right into the role that he was supposed to play here. Um, toners, don't don't sleep on them, though. They're, they're a solid team. Yeah. They can definitely pull a couple of games away from Linwood. Uh, I don't think that they have the capability to kind of push past them. I love the Toners. I think they're a very, very good team. But, you know, that loss last week against Kendron, when they lost to them 3-1, to one, just really kind of set the tone, some might say. <laughs> <laughs> as to how uh where they should be kind of in the bracket there gex yeah absolutely toners like you said don't sleep on them critic in particular has really popped off at times but i feel like it's a good uh, strong roster very similar play levels uh, uh across the team and they understand each other but they have to play against this xavier you've already started this isn't looking positive for toners <laughs> I just hit one of these last night and it felt so good. It wasn't off the ceiling by any means. It was off the backboard, but Xavier picking up right where he left off. He had the double touch in overtime against Kendron, and now he's just picking up the torch again, starting things off here for Linwood. Xavier almost looked for the ceiling pinch there. He's going to go for another shot here, blocked away by Fergo. That was good. Sure defense from Fergo, just floating behind the ball. Would have taken some serious power to push past him there as it comes back. Fergo will be on the defense again here. Great pass out, but the outlet isn't there. Critic can't make the touch, and Matthew is on board. 
Yeah, Matthew been, been the front runner this whole entire time for this Linwood squad. He finds himself mm. with his first opening goal here of this series. Huge shot, more importantly, right in the faces of the toners. They were just there. It was picture perfect. Mm. They could not stop it. And a reminder to everybody, if you're just coming in, DJ is the sub for this squad. You would never, ever convince me of that if I didn't know it from paper. Critic here, though, does have an answer. Like I said, Critic should be the one to step up here and take these goals. Fergo, some great chances here, and Brilliance does fill in the squad very, very well, but they're going to have to continue that. There's still one behind. Yeah, that was just a good shot right there from Critic. Both defenders there for Linwood. I want to say that was Xavier and DJ had a crack at that one, but mm. the awkward bounces kind of made that one a difficult Whoa, This is a brilliance. good shot right here from Brilliance right off of the what top. Using him like a golf tee, essentially. Yeah. Scored this one and used and, uh, pretty much having the equalizer here. Also kind of the, the flip into it, kind of acting like the golf club as well, really hitting from underneath that ball. The flick up and over, out with no defense. It was guaranteed thing for Toner's great shot by Brilliance. Almost like those two first goals didn't happen. All back to yeah. an equal scoring Reset. line. And it's, it's just, Within a minute. Yeah, it's, it's ridiculous to kind of see because those two goals were not easy for Linwood, you know, but mm. that just goes to show you how good the Toners are. They, they don't let it affect them. Ooh. That's one of the things I would say about the Toners is that, you know, a lot of things don't really affect their mental too much. They, they, they kind of just keep on playing with a you know, pedal to the metal yeah. and you know, they, they still believe that they always have a, a fighting chance to come back in each matchup. They always look like they're playing for a bit of fun as well. As as certain and solid as they are, they're not afraid to go for the stuff that makes them smile. Brilliance here, looking for just about anything to make them smile at this point. Great center. Critic is up. Going to feed it down, but Matthew reads it well. Brilliance again, just keeping the pressure on, but he does not have the boost. We'll have to double back to pick some up. I was going to say, he did actually dodge the demolition from Xavier pick up that 100 oh, pad as well and that's what kept him in this play and set this play up was all Huge the way pass. back from right here at that midfield line you see him push it over towards Critic Critic mm. keeping the defense guessing DJ and Matthew can only you know pretty much guess as to where he was going to put that one massive step up from Brilliance here I mean responsible for that Critic still had to have the placement perfect mm -hmm. you can kind of rely on that out of Critic the opportunity being created was the hardest part of exactly. that by that point, Brilliance stepped up. He's really, really doing wonders for the toners. And like I said, don't count them out. Yeah, if anything, I'm I'm pulling for the toners. I love the underdog story. Mm -hmm. it, it, and they're up right now. You yeah, must I, was be happy. Say, I mean, Linwood should <laughs> win this match. I mean, just the, based upon how they played last mm -hmm. game, but that's what yeah. makes this, you know, the top three, in my personal opinion, is Kendron, Toners, and of course, Linwood. It's, it's always just like such a wish wash. Of course, Raptors, you guys are, are in my hearts. I, I love you guys. I'm telling you guys, you guys, yeah. you guys have some great things out there, but um, like, it's, it's such a differential in gameplay between these two, three teams. Oh, like they're more Fager! consistent. Oh, I was going to say, they're save. so much more consistent. The Raptors are almost there. They're, they're, they're that solid fourth place team, maybe third place mm. team over like, you know, somebody like the Toners. Yeah, they would. I still think they're going to have to put in the work over Toners, particularly if they're performing like this. Exactly. Toners are up right now against the dominant Linwood. And uh, Raptors, they're watching this. Just biting their lip. Nerves probably on under displays of dominance. Toners still holding the line. Midfield, great pass to Brilliance. Down it comes, though, and the boost stolen means Fergo has to go all the way back to backboard. This is why I love Rocket League, man. Every, every, everybody's beatable any given time. Mm. Look at this shot, though, Whoa. from Xavier, almost finding his mark, but not really going to find it. There goes a good pass and play at... from DJ to Matthew. Matthew going to be a little bit too high, so showing some love as the fourth defender here, the backboard and, and post in that situation for the Toners. I mean, look at uh, the 100 game challenge between Foxy and Super Locky going on at the moment. Uh, Foxy stands no chance there and yet keeps playing out, gets some decent goals. And, uh, you know, like you said, anyone is beatable. Yeah. I mean, you, you must have missed the one with uh, Musty and Sunless Khan. I think. <laughs> no, I'm being serious. Musty, you know, good shots from Fergo. Uh, he started the challenge. Uh, Sunless Khan and Musty or what? Or who? Uh, yeah, that. that, that 
duo that the, that two players started the challenge. Yeah, 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 exactly. And Musty actually lost to Sunless Khan on game mm. 69. So can you imagine losing <laughs> 69 games in a row? I'm sorry, you know, yeah, 68 yep. games in a row. He won game 69. Uh, can you imagine losing 68 games in a row just, just over and over and over again? Yep. And just, yeah, I mean, like I said, anybody's beatable. If it's only one time, then hey, it's only one time. Matthew taps it up. Fergo, so close. Gets away here and Critic. Big 50 Whoa. on Savior, brilliant. Stepping up to the mark again here. I said he fills in the rotations well. Look at it happen right here. Critic makes an unexpected pinch across and Brilliance is just there on top of it. Exactly. That was such a good heads up play right there from Brilliance and just a little bit slow to respond as Xavier from Linwood. Not really expecting, I think, anybody to be there, but at the same time, this is just such a good showing right now for the Toners. And it's a different, uh, a different Linwood squad, but it's reminiscent back to the last series, though. They lost that first game, just took them a little bit to get back into rhythm. But we're going to see if that stands true or not as we you know, pretty much wrap this one up and head into game number two. Game number two, going to be an interesting one because uh, Linwood, you know, they might just be creating a bit of a uh, story for themselves. That game one, an issue for so many brilliant teams out there that uh, win consistently and just cannot nail down those game ones. They need the time to adjust to a new team. So Linwood, they're going to be hoping that's the case. We are seeing some red pings flash up for Matthew as well. So hoping that gets under control for him. Typically. We don't love to see it at all, but Fergo could, I think, uh, have a hat trick, I think, himself. Mm. Uh, yeah, hat trick in last place on this team. That's I mean, kind of uh, kind of awkward. It's actually ridiculous that it doesn't even matter at this point. Toners over Linwood of all teams are up by so much that they didn't need that goal. Uh, a brilliant shot taken, yes, but Linwood are well out of game one. Uh, this has been dominant by Toners from about halfway through this game. Yeah, but I mean, it's just one of those things where, you, like I said, you, you love to see how the toners don't give up. They don't let up yeah. at all. Yep. It's almost uh, demeaning, I guess is the word I'm looking for as mm. well. It's demeaning over towards the Linwood side. It definitely deflates them just a tad bit as they win this first ball game 7-2. to two, But it, it definitely deflates them a lot and gets them in the heads a little bit. Rocket League is definitely a mental game, Gex. You can probably attest mm. to that. Yeah. Um, so coming out here, losing that first game in a 7-2 to two fashion, um, definitely puts it into the back of their minds. And, you know, DJ sitting at the bottom of the list right there for Linwood, only 168 points, not really stepping up here in game one. But at the same time, we know how this Linwood team could flourish. So the toners have to be careful. DJ pushed himself to the absolute limit during the last series, though. And I could see that letting up. But it, the fact that it's there means it is kind of just repeatable or almost guaranteed. So I do think that we're going to see it again eventually here dj might even get the opportunity off the bat not if he's removed from field by fergo though like game one is in the past hopefully linwood steps up here in game number two and makes it more compatible or compatible i should say my apologies <laughs> but comparable even uh, any, any of the above <laughs> any of the bearables make this bearable to even cast with you get oh what uh, oh, anyway. <laughs> oh i see how it is oh my god i'm going home guys uh, it's that's it i have very thin skin that's all it takes i'm going home <laughs> oh man you know i love you know i love to be here with you it's a good shot no, though from no, critic though matthew <laughs> with a good save back towards the midfield we go we're gonna see matthew off the backboard going for the double touch a little bit too fast for his liking it's going to set up a nice transition here on the offensive end for the toners. It's all right. Buy me some Indomium. We're, we're all good. Yeah. <laughs> Matthew, big beat there. And a good start here for Linwood, but they can't finish it off. Xavier still providing the pressure. Can they get control of the boost like we know they want to? No, it's going to get away from them again here. Xavier on the back line might have a lack of boost here. We'll get the mid. He's able to turn on this, but... Waits upfield to create opportunities for Matthew. Oh, oh, that was so close to bouncing in. I was going to say, that was that's one of those shots where it's like, you know it's high enough or the mm. defense, where they were parked, they could have hit off the top of their car and into the net. So it's just very fortunate right there for the toners oh. that they didn't concede that first goal. Good save right there from Fergo as well. 
Matthew definitely wants that shot back. He knows exactly where he would have placed that one differently. Linwood seem to be panicking for this first goal. And once we see it, they will settle. But right now they are just taking shots and they are just pot shots. It, it, there's no opening being created first. They need to find the passes. They need Ooh. to rely on each other and they need to not lose the first goal here. Toners are looking so reliable right now. I would say that this is like five unanswered goals at this point in time mm. in favor of the Toners. And that's just a good shot right there as well from Fergo. He puts that one right dead center. DJ was on the cross. Matthew was on the cross as well. Just could not stop that one from going in just too fast. It's a good shot placement right there from Fergo. And sometimes that's all you need, Gex. You don't need the flashy plays, the stylistic plays. You just need good Rocket League uh, place, uh, shot placements. And sometimes those go in. Good chase out of goal from Linwood here, but they need to stop being on defense here. They need a good clear out. They're not mm -hmm. finding each other or a boom. And they are getting boost starved right now. This is brilliant. going back on zero, though, and it might just let up for a moment. Toners. They continue to be aggressive, but Linwood does get their break. As I say, Xavier had about 15 boosts to his name. Matthew had about 30 with that touch that he had. DJ was the only person sitting at about 100 boosts in his point in time and uh oh, good pass xavier's there what a save by critic say so dj was on the defensive end with that 100 pad boost as well so i mean they did escape from it temporarily they put a couple of shots through but at the same time they're right back towards the defensive half thought we might see our first from linwood there not to be good dribble from matthew actually lost control of it there for a second and worked in his favor as fergo gets solid control zero boost but off the ceiling has the flip the shots on target xavier's there for the save matthew keeps the pressure free for xavier to go for that clear upfield that's going to be a chase now matthew underneath gets it up into the corner out now brilliance will make the challenge and in the midfield it goes a redirect downfield and xavier just over the crossbar that one was not in buddy and that was close. I mean, he was trying to keep, keep that momentum of the ball, keep the swing, you know, in favor. I really felt like Linwood had a chance there on that offensive segment. You know, he, they had a little bit of momentum, and they were going to catch, uh, I think, the Toners off guard with a couple of the boosts that they had. Toners were definitely uh, putting everything oh, towards Matthew. the offensive end as Matthew scores here, equalizes this one just under 60 seconds. And I can just hear it now. What is he doing there? Critic had no idea Matthew was turning on that. Brilliant heads up play from Matthew. It might be a simple shot, but even making the call to go for that is a tough one. Great read, great shot. Linwood, even it up. Under 60 seconds to go. Brilliance. Ergo has just been all over the ceiling this whole entire game. I saw him up there again like Spider-Man, basically. Trying to go for some of these difficult ceiling redirects. Trying to catch the defense off guard with some of these tough angles. He might find something here. Brilliance down to Fergo. Xavier in trouble. Whoa. Up top crossbar. This one's lingering. And there it is. Critic going to fight with the top crossbar. Going to find another goal here for the Toners. I can't believe after we saw probably the best goal we will see all season in the high school league that we are watching that team go down to Toners right now. And it's not because I don't believe in Toners. It's just that Linwood's peak is so good, but Toners are showing that peak performance does not beat consistency. Not oh. only that, as they tie it up, not only that, but, you know, they really haven't had an answer as far as, uh, you know, DJ goes. But it seems like, you know, DJ's been not necessarily performing at his best. Matthew really hasn't been performing at their best either. But I think that's just courtesy of how the Toners play differently than um Kendron does yeah and, and it means that they have to holder. change nope. their rotations as well and that's tougher with a sub because you don't have the experience you're probably going to have play, uh, played out your main play style and the the adaptation might not be quite as available to the team with a sub on board but you gotta say dj was able to step up to game number two in the last series and he has made an impact on the scoreboard this time enough for them to find an overtime here it might not even take that matthew with a lot of control oh critic though with an answer to ground here we go overtime yeah so far i don't, don't want to jinx them just yet but overtimes have worked in linwood's favor 
since we've seen them on stream today. Oh, Matthew, Matthew, that oh. one's gonna be too far to the left. I saw as soon as it left his car, it was a little mm. bit too far. I think it was covered, it was in too. Yeah, I think uh, it could have been if he would have put that one on target, it would have been into the net. But regardless, they still do have a possession. As I say that, Brilliance is going to bring this one right back towards the orange half. Oh, Xavier, oh, what a defense. Incredible little duke of the bump there. Gets out of the physical play and the pressure doesn't remove him from the ball. Now, still chances for Linwood as a result and nearly Ooh. the redirect. Great pass upfield. The upfield pass does not secure them the game yet. 48 seconds and counting. Xavier. Did they quite get the touch that he needed to? Vir oh, Virgo was going to go for the bump the play fake. on the goal line, but that was just brilliant. Doing brilliant things there in that situation. Watch this one back. Matthew, I would say probably the best bet for a defender for Linwood goes. Had to respect the bump and also had to respect the speedy shot right there for the toners. And the toners going to do this one in OT, win this one 3-2. to two. But more importantly, Gex, move on to match point and potentially could sweep Linwood. What is going on in this league? I always like to look at the game from the perspective of somebody who knows soccer but not Rocket League. The mechanics involved in that shot from Fergo were more complex than it looked. Not only did he go for the fake on the ball, the first challenge into the air, he needed absolutely needed to get back to the ground as fast as possible to be able to take the shot at all after that point used his second jump to push himself downwards while he was flipped over and then still ro air rolls back onto his wheels in time to jump a second time and shoot actually yeah. an amazing goal by fergo there yeah i mean uh, honestly fergo keeping that pressure onto the defense like i said in the 2v1 situation had it been that 1v1 situation, Brilliance versus Matthew, it would never have been a goal. We'd probably still see ourselves in overtime in that situation. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, that's not what happened. That's not what presented itself. Fergal was there. He had the read. He was he just had, like you said before, doesn't necessarily need the bump. Just needs to cut off that point of attack and maybe even just mm -hmm. threaten that bump to get into the defender's head. So that's exactly what happened there in that situation. Like I said beforehand, such a good showing right now from the toners to definitely set the pace of play. And Ludwood has, for the most part, has been playing catch up. How? How are we seeing after last series, Linwood on the door of a sweep against them? Yeah. Here it comes I mean, again. I Matthew think it, it, it needs just, boost. Big just pressure here. Off of like the different play styles, I yeah, really feel yeah. like that's that's the biggest thing. Kendron has such a different play style than the Toners do. Linwood has such a different play style than Kendron does. Like. It's just like oil and water, basically, with a lot of these yeah. teams. And that's why, like I said beforehand, it just depends on what well, team you have. Even the then, Toners though. are definitely the team that, that could beat Linwood before, yeah. and it's so weird. Even then, though, Linwood normally, I do feel like, have the ability to adapt. It might just be that sub factor. You, you can't practice for every scenario with the sub. Uh, that's, mm -hmm. that's not realistic. And now DJ is performing as well as possible, but there turning up field expecting this to be the same as last series where there's going to be that cutoff but Fergo a more aggressive team upfield passing play and it goes in toners are set up different well I'm, I'm not really necessarily blaming anybody on the defensive end right there it's just a good read huh, right yeah. there from critic Fergo with a good solid shot too Matthew um you know just pushed up too far ahead and, and DJ thought that Matthew maybe had a chance at that one mm. so it's just uh, we're, we're not seeing the, the, the constant communication that we have been seeing. Like you said, oh. Linwood was so perfect against Kendron. Now it just seems like that's non-existent right now versus the Tonics. Chances there. Matthew, good 50 here is opening up chances now for Linwood. And it's important they capitalize, but it's critic with control. Matthew, going to read that one and open that for an, just a flash of a, a moment. And Brilliance gets it away. Oh, the opportunity for the bump and just enough pressure to make the jump happen. No touch on the ball and open that opportunity. Just not covered in time. Yeah, he the critic did a good job of taking away that uh, you know, clearing lane of uh, that DJ mm. had. He yeah. forced him, like you said, in the air. And that's what led to that, uh, that that goal there, that second one from the toners. So unfortunate being down by two goals. But not only that, being down by two goals while you're down in the series as well is just a huge shot to the mental, like I said, of Linwood. 
at this point in time. Yeah. But there's still a lot of time on the clock. They, they definitely can, you know, come back with three minutes remaining. I mean, don't get me wrong. Toners here, I think, any day of the week is actually the more reliable team. Uh, they, they certainly have consistency. But Linwood are so good that it does take an enormous, a gargantuan effort to push errors out of them. And that is what Toners are doing. Time and time again, they know exactly what needs to be done to create errors. You couldn't call what happened before a whiff. It was absolutely forced by Toners. And CJ's getting forced all over the field oh. right now. Almost found himself a goal. He got pinched from the defense, got pinched back from his teammate. I believe that was Xavier who threw him towards the other end of the field. And then on top of that, just making contact with the ball, almost making himself uh, you know, relevant in the scoreline situation, but mm. still find themselves without their first goal here in game number three is Linwood. You need to see the same thing from Linwood now. You need to see Linwood step up to force mistakes. They're taking this too much on their own individual plays right now. You can see it's kind of damaging the ego right now to, to be going down this way. And they're responding by just trying to play better rather than play the field. You yeah. need to create yeah. the opportunities, and that's not happening. It is just individual step-ups they're trying to make from Linwood. Or not only that, but it's like the most obvious point of attacks. This is the most mm. obvious plays that should happen. Like, you see the air dribble yep. from, from Matthew. You know that he wants to get another highlight real finish, so he's going to stick with that play instead of maybe dropping the ball down, yep. going for a bump oh, play. Nice. Good setup right here from Xavier, who's going to score the first goal. Um, and Matthew was there prominently, you know, having some pressure here on the offensive end as well. Mm. You know, like I said, threatening the bump, not necessarily making contact with it, but there, right there coming out of the net, um, you know, getting on top of that car, forcing Ford Fergo down so he has no chance at that save. Those are the type of plays that you kind of need to put yourself in. You don't need to flash yeah. the mechanical plays. Yep. You need those nitty gritty back down to the basics Rocket League plays. I mean, Xavier proved it right there. That was just good placement of a basic shot. You know what scores the most goals in RLCS? Good placements on basic shots. It is yep. the setup that matters, yep. not the flash. And yes, yeah. sometimes it does come down to that. The goal different, the difference maker in a game might be the flashy one. But the vast majority of the time, you stay alive by taking the basic stuff. This is a basic shot right here for Matthew. He puts it on target this time. He had a couple of them last game where he struggled putting them on target. But at the same time, not struggling now. Mm. Never ourselves a tie ball game. And those two goals, only about 20 seconds apiece. You know, that's this goes to show you how fast the team can come back um, with, a, with a high caliber offense like this. But I do agree with you, though, Gex. Uh, you, you brought up such a good point. RLCS, I think beforehand in the past, um, you know, you saw such flashy plays, mechanics, you know, kind of trickery that would happen mm. with uh, a lot of these players. Now it's down to the, the nitty gritty, the rotations. Yeah. Because what everybody can you learned do it, on the right? offensive side, defensive side, exactly. Now, you, you can have all of the mechanics in the world, but if your op opponents know how those mechanics work, they can respond to them. You still have to create the opportunities. And a lot of the times that means you can't just mech your way yep. through a yep. game. Uh, and too many people focus on the fact that, oh, you know, because RLCS players are capable of such and such a mechanic, that's what should be scored. That's not what is scored in RLCS mm -hmm. the vast majority of the time. It's just the stuff you remember. I'm gonna hit the nail on the head, but we'll probably have to do that in overtime unless something crazy happens right here. Oh, Fergo had a chance to kill this one in regulation. Two to two, though. I think we're gonna see ourselves in overtime, barring anything crazy happens at zero seconds. Oh. I say that, and Critic shuts me up. Oh my goodness, what a goal. I don't know if we can call that a curse or a blessing because Critic is coming through with a highlight play. It might be a basic shot, but oh my goodness goodness it is taken so well at such a crucial moment tone has come through with a sweep against linwood who is looking legendary today i just want to say the linwood i'm sorry okay i just want to say the linwood i'm sorry i i cast or curse you guys <laughs> towards the tail end of that game i'll take full blame and responsibility for that one but i want to drill your point home gex with the mechanical uh topic we were talking about there hasten point think freestylers in that situation everybody thinks that freestylers have the capabilities to go to rlcs and play for some of these rlcs caliber teams i think in my personal opinion you know to, to kind of draw your point home a lot of the freestylers when you apply them into some of these mechanical teams you know think of uh 
Uh, one of my favorite ones, you know, Panda, who, who's ridiculously good at the uh, Rocket League, but mm. at the same time, you can't, he, he's not applicable into some threes formats because they're just so used to having so much time, mm. unlimited boost, so on and so forth. It just, it just doesn't apply in those certain situations. There's very few freestylers that make it to that threshold yeah. that is yeah. RLCS. I, I, I was saying this the other day that Rocket League is such a weird game because you can get into any shooter and it's move mouse and click. Yes, there are mechanics based on that. It doesn't take that many hours comparatively to Rocket League to kind of master the mechanics of those games. Whereas you come into here and nobody has hit the skill ceiling. Even the freestylers mechanically are still inventing stuff. And you cannot dedicate yep. the time to being a freestyler without sacrificing something else. Your gameplay has to suffer in some aspect and you have to try and make it your skill set as rounded out as possible if you want to be the best at this game. But the skill ceiling is nowhere near reached. And when it comes to taking the basic shots and everything, this takes a lot of, uh, it, it takes so much effort to be able to open that up. And it, yes, you might say just the best of the best need that, 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 that they can answer that mech. No, look across at even APAC. They have just stepped up in mechanics and now Finally, we are getting to the point where the mechanical players, they can't step up. We have rank X players who are freestylers jumping into that region going, yeah, free games. It's not happening for them. You need to be able to get down the basics, the bumps, the plays. And that's what we're seeing here in the high school scene as well. Everywhere is stepping up. Rocket League yep. is stepping up. I was going to say Rocket League, like we said beforehand, every single time the, the game gets advanced, it trickles down the ladder of like what you, what you call this ranked, essentially, you know, mm. uh, you got your rank X players and you have your pro players, in my personal opinion, that trickles down to, you know, SSL, GC, you know, so on and so forth, um, that the game is just completely changing and always modifying all the time. But mm. that's going to wrap up our broadcast here. I want to reiterate the fact, good job to the toners on yeah. winning this matchup three to zero in a ridiculous fashion over Linwood so shout out to them for pulling off the sweep against a team who we both thought was just going to come mm. out here and just crush it I do want to uh you know kind of uh look back at our day and see what happened what transpired we yeah. only had four yeah. games Gex but I guarantee like those were the four most ridiculous games that we had <laughs> because it was just like so back and forth so close and this is why I love this AEL Cup so much because of the fact that the the, the top four in this whole division, the whole the standings here are just absolutely ridiculous. Mm. But thinking back to the rest of the stream, of course we had the Raptors who won over MRC in a three to one fashion. And then the Raptors came out and actually got their first sweep, I think of the season over SPC as well, winning that matchup three to zero. So they're two and zero on the day. And then of course we had the Linwood team taking out Kendron in a three to one fashion. Mm. And then coming back onto the stream over and getting swept themselves in a three to zero How? fashion. How? I, How did this happen? Uh, Linwood were so dominant. They, we just called them, you know, the next RLCS for like leaders for uh, OCE. They, they, they made that step up to look like that. And then suddenly it all goes away in the flash of, uh, in the blink of an eye. Uh, crazy, crazy stuff for that to come back in. Of course, we had two off stream as well uh, there as uh, we saw some amazing stuff between uh, KSHS 3 to 0 against MRC, SPC 0 3 to MGS there as well. So Queensland uh, still coming out, showing up strong, but you've got to say the other states are answering in spades. Victoria stepping up here as well with both games there from the Victorian teams going 3 to 0. Yeah. Victorian teams definitely showing up and showing out today, showing how strong they are. I know you're a Queensland man yourself, but mm -hmm. um, let's take a look at the standings real quick. Ooh, here we go. Div as we uh, hop into D3, I believe everybody in Division 3, if I remember correctly from our producer, he told us that uh, uh, everybody forfeited today on the Division oh, 3 side of the field. Wow. So uh, I, I don't know. So the standings are going to kind of look the same as they kind of have. Yeah. Trinity Esports, of course, on the top of that one, SCCC White in second place at five and two, JPC Rocket League number two, which their 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 sister team we're going to see here pretty soon, um, who's going to be in mm. Division two. Uh, they're currently sitting at five and three in third place. Well. So, 
Looking at Div 3, I mean, if you're a, if you're a State of Origin fan, that's going on right now, but Queensland are looking incredibly dominant through Division 3. Now uh, into Division 2 as well. Queensland not looking quite as hot. New South Wales and Victoria on top there with PCS. And YVG Watermelon. YVG Watermelon. I am so excited to see them if they yeah. can make it out of their group as well. They are so good to see what PCS has put up to not lose a game in that group. That's going to be impressive. Yeah, that Watermelon team is definitely one of those ones I always circle and kind of like follow week to week and see if mm. they can actually take out that PCS squad. Look at the game differentials in you this know, group. So close, exactly. Yeah, so close, I was going to say. But PCS and uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, watermelon just, you know, uh, leagues ahead in, in this mm. league over here in Division 2. So Division 1 wrapping everything up towards the tail end. We have ourselves a really, really tight, tight race here in Division 1. The Toners, of course, sitting on top right now in a five to one fashion. Kendron in number two, uh, in the number two spot in four and two, Linwood four and two, and then Ripley Raptors blue yeah. four and two. And like I said, this is what Game makes this league so good though, Gex, is the fact yeah. that anybody in this top four is just so ridiculously beatable. Like the yeah. Raptors are the Kendron's kryptonite and Kendron is Linwood's kryptonite and the toners are, you know, like, so, I mean, sorry, like Linwood's Kendron's kryptonite and then toners are mm. Linwood's kryptonite and then the toners lose to the Raptors. It's just like, what is going on over here? Yeah, crazy stuff. And like you said much earlier in the day, the game differential, we don't normally talk about it too much, but it does become important later on. And it almost guaranteed will at this rate. Look at those four to twos. The only thing separating those three teams is the game differential kedron sitting on top with double linwood though eight games uh positive in their goal in their game differential so uh sitting pretty well in second position but it only takes a single win for anybody below them and one loss themselves and that all changes so uh crazy how tight it is like you said here in division one but it has been fantastic day i hope you've been happy watching division one we have had an awesome time with it i think we just hit the clip of the season uh there in our second last series which one absolutely insane <laughs> oh for me which it was one? that the the fake uh sting pop that's that's one of the craziest shots yeah. i have seen in high school league history absolutely insane i hope that gets uh chucked up on social media somewhere because it deserves the uh the representation I mean, if, if they don't do it, I know Liam's really, really good at doing that. But, but if yeah. they don't do it, I'm definitely going to put it up on social media for sure because that was an insane shot. And then, of course, you have to think back to the Matthew Air dribble, in my personal opinion, in overtime mm. with the demolition from his teammates and stuff. That everything was just so crisp in that one as well, mm. uh, whereas everything was kind of caught off guard. But, Gax, before we get out of here, let's go ahead and just one more time thank our sponsors real quick. Yeah. Let's talk about our lovely, lovely gaming PC provider. Thank you very much to Predator Gaming, the gaming PC partner who provide high-end gaming focused PC solutions in both laptop and desktop formats. And of course, powered by Intel. And if you guys want to grab yourself a nice monitor to pair with that, we, of course, we have AOC monitors, the gaming monitor partner who provide the best in-class monitor solutions for all your gaming needs. And of course, Indomie, the noodle partner made with high quality flour and selected ingredients and spices. A plate of Indomie Mi Goring. I always mess that up, <laughs> Gex. Uh, we're certainly brightening up your day. What was that? Goring. Was Goring. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, try one of the flavors available at your local grocer. Of course, I don't have it, so I'm sad. But at the same time, I can probably order it from indomie.com.au and try some uh, for myself. Of course, wrapping up, thank you very much to Game on Cancer, the charity of choice for AEL, who fund much needed cancer research projects with the AEL donating a portion of all student participation fees to this life-saving cause. If you guys want to donate as well, please scan this QR code down here at the bottom of the screen. If you guys do not want to scan a QR code because you're lazy, then please head over to AEL's Tiltify campaign page. That link, though, will take you right to it. So if you're lazy, scan the QR code. It's so much easier for you guys. Thanks for shouting that out. Uh, whoops, because, yeah, if we're going to represent the goals well, we've got to represent our sponsors as well. So, yeah, thank you, Predator AOC, Indomie, and, of course, our uh, charity of choice game on cancer. So it's been an awesome day. Uh, let's take a look at what we've got in store next week as well before we close out because it has been absolute chaos in this division. Let's have a look one more time at what we have coming up. Yeah, of course, we have SPC taking an MRC. That's a good matchup right there. You know, mm -hmm. battle for 
you know, towards the bottom of it. But at the same time, I really feel like it's it's that such a good a matchup. They pair, they, they pair up so well, in my mm. personal opinion. We had such a good showing last week. This week was outstanding as well. But the SPC MRC match should not disappoint. And of course, we have the Raptors taking on Kendron as well. That should be a really, really good matchup. Kendron, like I mm. said, currently sitting in second place. Raptors in fourth place. Um, then Linwood currently sitting in that uh, third place spot, taking on our um, the, the Raptors as well, which would be an interesting matchup because, like we said, it's that third place, third place versus fourth place. All these matches matter. Who's going to win those ones? They mm -hmm. kind of fluctuate with the standings. And then rounding off everything, of course, is Kendron versus uh, the Toners, which is absolutely going to be a good matchup. In my personal opinion, maybe the best one, if not the Raptors yeah. and Linwood for sure. I, I would agree with that one because uh in play but the one i'm looking forward to the most just because the opportunity it provides has to be the uh ripley raptors versus kedron because yeah uh, that ripley raptors are at the bottom of those three teams sharing the uh what is it four to two right now all uh kind of equal second place other than game differential ripley raptors are sitting at the bottom of that they have the biggest question mark on them if they can take down kedron who are sitting in first place really a good look for them but um we also have the off stream matches spc versus lshs um down there as well. Linwood uh, should be able to take that one quite comfortably. They have been so dominant there, especially when they're given the space and I feel like they may have it there. MGS versus MRC as well down there would probably be a pretty good game. Uh, unfortunately, will be off stream uh, next week, but you guys tune back in because you saw the chaos on field today. Unbelievable stuff and only in the best way as well. I feel like everybody performed either at or above expectation today. Yeah, it was insane. Everybody was just, you know, fair Rocket League, in my personal opinion. Of course, other than uh, that uh, Raptors team taking on SPCC, which were, which was a sweep. But still, thinking back to that game, there's still a bunch of good goals from SPCC. And I think the game was decently close as well. But at the same time, you know, like I said, just a bunch of Rocket League action that was so, so good. This, this whole entire Division 1 in the AEL is just always a good matchup, regardless of uh, who, who is playing out here. Yeah. So... Yeah, I mean, other than that, Gax, I appreciate you being on with me this week. It's been an absolute roller coaster of emotions this whole entire season. Yeah, absolutely. It's always fun working with you, Whoops. It's been ha great having you on here for the AEL. Uh, I appreciate you've been it, man. enjoying your uh, time in OCE. Uh, I'm sure it won't be the last we see of you here just in the high school leagues as well. But gotta say, it's been an awesome place to be right now. High school leagues are stepping up. Like we said, Rocket League is stepping up in general and you guys are not being left behind. And you guys in the chat, you guys are stepping up as well. So come back next week. We will see you then. Until then, though, Gex and Whoops, we are out. We'll catch you next time.